Don't talk to me twice. I don't play dice. I'll make a move on the board, it's precise. The fuck is the price? I took a fiddle and dipped in the ice. I'm still calling now, I'm on a flight. Crew heading east, got a book in the night. First stop is Atlanta. I got breakfast plans at the Waffle House. From the ring to the world of combat sports, a welcome to the Rush City Fight Show. You should join me here alongside my good pal, Jay motherfucking smooth. And thank you all for joining us wherever and whenever you are listening. What's up, man? Man, I am doing amazing, brother. I'm ready to wrap up everything from the weekend. How are you doing, bro? I know you have been just you've been you've been all over the place on the grind, my brother. Is not only is it great to see you, I'm just glad you are well rested and ready to go. Oh, thank you, my man. It's been good. It's been good. Yeah, I've been busy. I did squeeze in a few streams this weekend. You know, I wasn't gonna leave my chat. I wasn't gonna <laughs> leave my channel hanging. But uh, yeah, I was just busy with like wedding stuff that I'm involved with. I'm in a wedding party, and we had like. We had like the whole groomsmen and bridesmaids have like a big dinner. Uh, my birthday is coming up next week and I'm being dragged to a hockey game, kicking and screaming. Uh, but at least there's no UFC. At least there's no UFC. So That's like, true. No, no, no serious UFC. You're right about that. I'm missing that. KSW, yeah. God damn it. But that's okay. That's uh, okay. I'll, I'll catch up next time. But yeah, we got a lot to talk about here today. So let's not rag the puck to throw a hockey term out there <laughs> any longer. For those in the live chat, we appreciate you guys. For those of you who are watching after the live stream, we appreciate you guys as well. I threw the link in the live chat. Go check out our second channel, The Rush City Fight Show. We will be moving to that channel and streaming there once we hit around 200, 250 subscribers. So if you want to support us, go subscribe to that channel and throw Jay or myself a like wherever you're watching City Life Project or the Rush Hour Fight Club. Or, Hour or one. throw it or throw it both ways if you a motherfucking G. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. hour one, we're we're doing things, we're doing things ass backwards today because what a tremendous <laughs> weekend in the world of boxing, ladies and gentlemen. We will start there. We'll quickly talk about just John Dodson. 
that whole main event in BKFC. We won't run down that entire card, but then I'm going to hand pretty much the mic over to Jay so that he can run down everything. Valdez Wilson, Amazon Prime debut, Wardley versus Clark, and then we will dive into a little one championship. We will explain why the one Friday fights is the one championship card to pay attention to this week as the fight night definitely definitely lacking uh again in hour one we will also highlight something that era hawani refused to highlight and that was a, an amazing main event at lfa 180 we'll talk through it we have some clips from that awesome event and also one of the craziest upsets that i've seen not only in 2024 but in all of 2023 as well in Cage Warriors, and then we'll run down the rest of the weekend in Mixed Martial Arts. Hour two, we're going to talk about UFC Fight Night. We'll talk about the fuckery that was the refing. We'll talk about the eye pokes. We'll talk about Vicente Luque and James Krause back in the media. That is right. There's uh, James Krause's name is circulating again, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll talk about that. There's also a few UFC tidbits that we want to highlight, as well as Pancras. Uh, there's a new king. There's a new queen of Pancras, ladies and gentlemen, for those who stayed up and watched some Japanese MMA after the fuckery that was <laughs> UFC fight night. And then we will end the show with a hockey fight reaction. We got a banger, ladies and gentlemen. For those who know Donald Brashear, dude, he, <laughs> we got a banger from Donald Brashear, all right? And funny enough, also fought in MMA. But let's get back to the topic at hand. Let's get to uh, the world of boxing, starting with Bear Nux. And we have John Dodson retaining his BKFC flyweight title due to a majority draw to start off this fight weekend. Open scoring for the first time in BKFC. Jay, we're seeing this more in combat sports. Octagon MMA oversees that Czech League, which is doing amazing things. They've implemented open scoring. And now BKFC. And why I mention that is there's a lot of people who are bitching the last few weeks saying, no, BKFC is rigged. BKFC is rigged. It's freaking open scoring, man. It's open scoring. And Jay, you and I both agreed on every single scorecard. Um, before I run them down, how are, how are your thoughts, or what are your thoughts on open scoring in combat sports? It's good depending on the combat sport. Now, when I say the combat sport, open scoring, say, in like BKFC, I think is fine because it's bare knuckle. Very hard for you to cruise, even when you're ahead in bare knuckle. You can still get hit with one jab, and it can ruin your life. Uh, in a sport like MMA, for example, uh, that's where I'm on the fence because uh, there are some people who don't really like to fight to finish people. They like to fight to win. And if they know they're up two rounds and they can coast the third, they will make the third round as unwatchable as possible. So in that situation, I don't like it. But in a situation like this with BKFC, I'm fine with it. I have no problem with it at all. Yeah, so first round, 10-8 John Dodson. He dropped Aguero. Second round, Aguero scored a knockdown on Dodson. Third round, he scored a knockdown on Dodson. Fourth round, it was a clear win for Dodson, in my opinion. And the fifth right. round was the swing round. And yes. honestly, Dodson landed more shots. He did. Like, literally, uh, Aguero landed, like, two or three from the outside. And it was a very tentative, like, no one was really pulling the trigger in that one. So, 10-8 Dodson round one. 10-8 uh, for Aguero. 10-8 for Aguero in round two and three. 10-9 Dodson four. 10-9 Dodson five. 46-46. It's not that complicated, ladies and gentlemen. And I look forward to them running it back when BKFC goes back to Miami. They need to run that thing back because it was close enough to where I think a rematch is warranted. And honestly, it was a fight where John Dodson actually had to put some work in. So you know what? I have no problem with it. Well, it was a good fight. Back. Yeah. It was a was good, good fight. And fight. it's exactly how we predicted. It was a right. smaller Dodson who's going to have to get into the pocket and blitz against a rangy fighter who utilized his jab beautifully. I like right. the matchup. I thought it was awesome. And I can't wait for them to run it back because they're both going to have to make some adjustments. We exactly. might actually see more of a brawl in the second one. Which is honestly, I thought we would see a little more this time. But like you said, the other dude, uh, Aguero, used his jab a lot better than I thought he would. And he made it very interesting. So, yeah, I think second time around, they adjust and we see something different. Somebody actually gets put down this time. All right, Jay. We right, had yeah. an amazing weekend of boxing. I even caught a lot of it. Not all of it. 
Because, like right. I said, I was busy doing some other things. But I, but I, I caught most of it, and I rewatched right. all the important fights uh, and caught up yesterday. But I'm gonna hand the mic over to you, man, and let's let's start with uh, let's start with top rank. Let's start with Valdez versus Wilson, and then we'll go over to PBC, and then we will end with what we saw on Boxer over there in the UK, um, courtesy of Sky Sports. But yeah, hand the mic over to you, my man. Uh, swoon away and run down and recap boxing this last weekend you know what the uh the top rank card was actually better than i thought it would be it ended up being a pair of fights that proved to be somewhat entertaining now with the co-main event with the two ladies a little bit of controversy because there was uh there was a cutout obviously along the ladies and uh one of the other of course you know the losing side was very salty about oh you know the other girl uh, you know, they had a little, she used a little more Vaseline on her and, and she was a little greased up and blah, blah, blah. So basically a lot of trash talk between those two out of there. But I think the, the scorecards were right. as Anissa Estrada deserved to win, even though the other girl, poor girl got cut in her fucking head. But that's just what happens when you clash. Uh, everything else kind of interesting here, but I'd say the, the one thing that's really noteworthy, though, is the main event. Um, the stoppage, I agree with. The well, the stoppage I say I agree with because he was on his way to getting destroyed was Liam Wilson. I wish the referee would have let it go a little further, but I think even so, he would have just been knocked out cold. Uh, Valdez looked better than he's looked in a while. Uh, I'm not sure if he's somebody that's going to set the division kind of on fire right now because he's had to fail drug tests in the past, and while he looked good here. Uh, I just think this was a case of Liam Wilson just didn't belong in the ring with him. And, and you know, that'll happen sometimes. We've seen Valdez, though, in there with a guy like Navarrete. You know, we've already seen him. Right. Best fight of 2023, in my opinion. Best, Best fight, fight of, of 20... 2023 in boxing. And, that, and honestly, that was the fight that really exposed Valdez. It's like as good as he is, there are some punchers in that weight class that punch faster than he is, whereas he's a guy that likes to load up on the power. But Navarrete just kind of stripped him apart, really, and broke him. So... You know, I think he'll be he'll be serviceable in the weight class at, at 30. Uh, but yeah, he he you know, good win here. As far as his future, he'll probably get another important fight. Who he fights, though, is the question. There's some names that he could fight, but uh there's like four or five out there. But um he, he's gonna get an important one next, and he might actually lose that next one. But for this one, it was a good fight. And as for Liam Wilson, he shouldn't hang his head about this because he was winning until the experience of Valdez took over. And once that took over, that was it for the kids. So he might end up maybe on like a no limit pay-per-view out in Aussie land on Fox or something. But I think the kid will be fine. Good fight to like overall though. Like you said, it started off really competitive. Absolutely. Very competitive. And, um, and actually Richard Torres as well, as Jay Sharp mentioned, Richard Torres is another one to mention on here. Uh, up and coming head view. This was brutal the way he knocked this man out. He knocked out a guy that looks like he changed uh, the oil in my car a few weeks ago. Um, but nonetheless, 41. The thing about, oh my God. Right. <laughs> the thing, the thing about Torres here as an Olympian is that now he's, he's to the point now where we need to see him against a, a serviceable heavyweight. Uh, Cause he's been knocking out a lot of guys that have part-time jobs and work as mechanics, which is not a problem for building up an Olympian, but we're now at the point where it's like, okay, Torres, you you've knocked out enough mechanics. It's time to give you somebody who at least at least trains full time. You know what I mean? It has some mid level skills. So for Torres, this was a nice win to to up the competition, so to speak. Right, right. Moving forward. Uh, anything else on this card that you want to run down before we move on to the next? Not one? Not really. That was kind of the main one. Everything else is kind of kind of standard there. And as for Estrada, while that was a great win, no controversy. Uh, I don't think there's any any argument about the other side. I think the other side was just salty about losing, even though I know they were complaining about fouls, but there was nothing really to complain about. Now this right here, oh boy, we have some shit to talk about here. I want to start off with Brian Mendoza. Uh, this was a little surprising to me. As Mr. Mendoza was the guy who beat uh, Sebastian Fondora, who we're going to talk about a little later. Him losing this was a little surprising because Fondora, I mean, Mendoza, even in the loss to Tim Zhu in his last fight, he still looked good. It's just that Tim Zhu was a level above. Uh, I didn't expect him to get ran through by this Ukrainian guy who just, I mean, he was on my radar, but he wasn't somebody I would think 
would come in here and make a big statement. He made a monumental statement by smacking around the <laughs> man that knocked out the new uh, the new one to watch in the division, Sebastian Fundora. Uh, so this was a shock to me right here. Even as a even though he was a dog, I didn't expect him to get battered like that. That was just that was just full on uh, one a one sided ass whooping. Well, as far as that. boxing dogs go, like he wasn't really that much of a dog. <laughs> right, not that much of a dog. So you would think it'd be competitive, but it wasn't competitive. It was one-sided, which was completely shocking to me. You would think he was a plus uh, 1,000 favor. So, I mean, what's 1,000 dog or some shit? But he was getting hit. So the next fight I want to go over on here, Kermel Mon. Uh Yeah, you're right. There was Andy Cuba. This fight uh, was... A little better than expected. Kermel Martin's only 17 years old, but the commission gave him a license to turn pro early, have his first fight early. Usually a lot of fighters wait till they're 18. Um, but in this case, uh, he ended up having his pro debut on Amazon Prime. And I'm glad they put it on Prime because I've covered at least three events where he was on it. And a lot of people asked how he was doing. He is a he is a Floyd Mayweather money team project. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, he's a, he's a, yep. he's a Mayweather guy. Uh, undefeated, uh, being slowly built up. He has the Mayweather ability. Obviously, he has just by the training. He pretty much is another Mayweather, just with heavier hands. Is the is the best way to put it. He hits a lot harder than Mayweather. But then again, Mayweather during his younger years, he hit harder too when he actually tried to knock people out. So we'll see how long it lasts for this kid because for some reason under Floyd's management. A lot of them hit hard in the beginning, and then, you know, after a while, Floyd's like, okay, this is the part where we're going to change everything up, and you're going to be defensive. Happened to a lot of fighters under his watch. Uh, but in this case, yeah, this was a nice build-up fight for Kermel, and I imagine they're going to bring him up slowly. Cuba, a, a good effort, but he was basically brought here to get beat up, and that's exactly what happened. He'll be fine, though. He's only, like, 21 or some shit, so he'll be good. Yeah, the, both of uh, them are super young. 17, yeah. though. You don't see that many, like, again, out, outside of, the, like, the, the Olympic program. You don't see many of these young young cats fighting pro. Right, right. You never see that, really. It's, it's, a, it's a rarity. And here's another thing that's very interesting. Is Randy Letter, he is a guy that is a, he, he's a literally a boxer type. He is not the type to knock people out. And yet he knocks out this guy in two rounds. <laughs> At four, 40 years old, four year old Cuban guy. Dude, uh, what a beauty. Wait. What a beauty. I did, I, I caught up on this one for sure because everyone was like, you got to see the old, the old fart from Cuba, man. And I was like, of course he's from Cuba. Like, I know, right? Man, shout I out, shout out Pang, but that's a different sport. Uh, man, I'm no, nah, I'm telling you, bro. He gave this man a real Cuban sandwich for real. I didn't expect him <laughs> to hit him as hard as he did because Lara is the finesse boxing type, you know what I mean? Likes to control you to a decision. But this man, he proved why he's still WBA middleweight champion. Don't fuck with the Cubans at all, Angle Dan. You can't, you can't fuck with them Cubans, man. He hit that boy with the Cuban missile and he couldn't get up. It was a, it was actually a nasty knockout. And I got to be honest with you, bro. It might be the nastiest in uh, in Lara's career. And the fact that he's getting it at forty and he's middleweight and he's WBA middleweight champion, meaning that all these cats now have to come up and face him. That's scary. He knocked out a guy that was thirty two years old. That's all. That's insanity, man. Some about them Cubans, bro. They build different. That oh, man, 40, 40 years old, still a dog in the game. I got to be honest with you, though. I was actually kind of wrong about this. I was a little afraid for Lara because he's 40 years old, a little older, been a little bit uh, since he was actually last in the ring. But still, he, pre yeah, I was about to say, you know what I mean? 2022, been off a little bit. Almost two years. Old. Almost two years, man. So I was I was nervous for him going into this, but I'm happy to be wrong. And this is the exact uh, result that deep down I wanted, and I'm glad we got it. And as far as we fights next, uh, I'm not sure. I have to check out the rankings again at WBA because they're going to shift them around uh, as of today. But I can tell you right now, his challengers, they got to be afraid because the fact that he's knocking people out at 40 after being a finesse boxer his whole career, that's scary. That's some scary shit. That means his. That means he's he's now he he has so much experience he could just find the openings and put these guys down at his age. Scary. Cuban Missile Crisis would be a fire nickname, bro. It's got to be his right there, man. If it's not already his nickname, it better be after that. Oh my goodness! It's like the man. Right, what's next? Party. What's next? Oh, I think you know what's next. The the co main event. Oh this my was, god! This was hilarious. Now in the build up. The, and uh, and we didn't. I'm surprised we didn't even talk about it. Roly in his training camp actually adopted a Chihuahua dog. 
and he named it, and he named it Cruz after Isaac, because he said in order to fight a Chihuahua, he had to adopt one. So, <laughs> so it, it seems as if that strategy ain't work because he got his ass whooped the whole fight. Didn't win a single round. Didn't win a single moment. He didn't bruise. I don't think he even landed a power shot on on Cruz here. If anything, uh, the the Chihuahua ended up making a meal out of him because <laughs> fucking Roly had nothing for him, bro. It was honestly sad for Roly because not only was this a one sided beating, uh, when he had to give a post fight interview, my man took about five seconds for his brain to buffer before he finally said Happy Easter. And my man said Happy Easter three times and probably thought he said it once, the poor bastard. Uh, and, un and what's unfortunate for Roly here is that it's one thing if this was competitive. This was an ass whooping. This was an ass whooping. One sided. I can't think of one moment in the fight where Roly won. I can't think of a, of a round that he won. I can't even think of a moment where he had brilliance. This was Cruz walking him down. You know, and just spending the fight. Okay, let me see how I can trap him. Let's see what punches he doesn't like, which ones he's fine with. And once he found out the combo to hit him with, he just teed off on him and he sent Roly running. And honestly, if the referee didn't jump in to save his ass, he would have been knocked out dead and probably have to be stretchered out because he was it was it was to the point where he was just getting his head knocked around and his arms were right down by his side. And when you see somebody eating power shots like that from a from literally a fire hydrant of a human like Cruz, that is not good news, bro. Roly, Ro Roly is, uh, let's just say his brain is probably still rebuffering as we speak. I honestly felt bad for him a bit when the <laughs> when the camera went to like De La Hoya and crew just laughing their asses off at the whole situation. I uh, know, right? Oh my god, bro! And what's even worse is Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins were laughing at him because you know. Um, Oscar is, I believe, managing Cruz, and they were at a different fight. And Oscar De La Hoya actually recorded a video of him and Bernard laughing at Roly and sent yep. it to him. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, savage, very savage. savage, very savage. Now, but that's why I can't take Oscar seriously now as a promoter because he's still like he still has one foot in as like you know a yeah. fighter, you know, and still trying to get. It's just like, man, you, you got to walk away from that if you if you want to be taken serious. Or we're still just gonna, you know pull punches at you the next time you know you fumble <laughs> exactly like and, and what's funny about him is he should really be worried about ryan garcia right now it's almost as if he wants to talk about anyone but ryan because the ryan thing stresses him to all oh, holy hell i and honestly and no, i don't blame him i don't, I don't blame, blame him either this is, this is, his little golden goose right now is off the rails so he ain't lying now this main event bro this main event changes everything man what a fucking fight this this right here is what we like to call a game-changing upset. Now, how this came about is very unfortunate for Tim Zhu because if it wasn't for the fact that he accidentally head-butted the elbow of Fundora and was brutally cut on top of the head, if it was not for that, there's a good chance he continues, you know, on the pace that he was on and, you know, just kind of opening things up and he's going right to a decision, likely winning. But, man. Blood on the camera. Blood, yeah. blood on the camera, man. Blood on Insane. the camera. Literally blood all over Fandora, on the mat, on Zoo. That elbow in boxing is easily one of the worst. Because that, that was a full-on gusher, folks. It looked like he had been shot on the top of his head. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I had yeah. the picture, but I was like, oh, man, I, I don't know if YouTube will like that. But uh, it's in that thread that I shared from Kaposa, if you guys want to <laughs> see. He, he posted all the pictures. It literally it, it, it gave me It gave me um, Chidi Nujikwani vibes against uh, Robocop. Like, that's how yeah. like, deep this thing was. It was a it was a gusher, and honestly, Fundora was smart because all he had to do was just throw jabs at that cut, which, they you know, props to the corner of Tim Zhu. They were trying their damnness to just manage that thing. But literally, he would get off the stool after they cleaned it, and more just kept coming out. And it's like, you can't do anything about that. <laughs> All you could do is get it out of his eyes and then hope for the best. But yeah, man, it was absolute viciousness, man. And and honestly, what sucks about it is Zoo seemed like he was finding his footing when that elbow happened. It seemed like he was finally finding the rhythm that he needed to kind of outbox Fundora here and outwork him. But Fundora was smart. He used the jabs, basically death by a thousand jabs. He kept jabbing at the cut and the blood just kept flowing. And he knew if he did that, uh, he was going to win. And yeah, man, 
Fun Doro truly was given a gift that night, as Hank the Tank said. If it was not for that elbow, he loses that fight. But here's what makes it interesting. We now see what makes Fundora uh, a problem in the weight class. You duck a little too low under that man's guard and you get up, you might be eating a forearm or elbow to the top of your head. And it's not even his fault. Like, he's just a long, lanky person. He's a wacky, waving, inflatable, arm-flailing tube man come to life. <laughs> And when you're fighting somebody who's that long and lanky, literally looking like the stick figure that you see on a bathroom sign signifying men or women, when you have somebody built like that, you're going to you're going to fight someone who you're basically fighting somebody who is a, a human tree. You're trying to fight somebody as a tree. And when you unfortunately get caught up in one of them branches, it's not going to be pretty for you. How you fight a guy like this seems crazy. And here's what's even more messed up. The, I believe it was the WBO or WBC. I have to see who. But they just ordered, as of right now, for purse bids and a contract agreement for Terrence Crawford and Fundora. And let me tell you right now, they have till April 25th to get all this shit together. Wow. And if they agree to it, uh, if they agree to that and he ends up fighting Terrence Crawford, I'm going to tell you this. While Terrence Crawford is the better fighter, does he have the style to neutralize Slender Man here? Because Tim Zhu is an exceptional fighter, easily a middleweight that could have given Terrence Crawford a fun fight. Wouldn't have beat him, but would have given him a fun fight. Now Terrence Crawford might have to literally fight uh, Slender Man. <laughs> and, and the question now becomes, for people at middleweight, how do you fight that? How did, how did Brian, like Brian Mendoza landed a power shot on that chin because Fundora's chin's there. But yes, can but it took him seven it? rounds. It took yes. him seven rounds to do it. Yes, took him seven rounds to do it. It took him a while just to find, finally find the sweet spot. And if anything, I feel like if fun, if, if Zoo doesn't run to that elbow, I think maybe Zoo finds a spot. But that's the thing for Terrence. Can you get the hell away from that elbow while you're trying to do that head movement, get on the inside and land it? Because now you see those long limbs are going to be a problem. If you try to duck under and, you know, Sebastian's got that guard up, you can easily headbutt the elbow, and that blood is just going to cover the whole canvas. I think Zoo wins the rematch. I think so, too, because he you, you, he has to make massive adjustments now because the fighting a guy like this is is different. You know what I mean? It's one thing. Like, the like you, you saw the stare down, bro. It was cartoon-like. Oh, yeah. Slender Man is also a good name. that go hard if you're Bill Life. But seriously, that should be his nickname now. It should be Slender Man. Yeah, I like him <laughs> more than the yeah, towering like, inferno. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's so like WWF 70s, like cheesy yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Like he should be Slender Man, because you're literally fighting a tall, lanky individual who, let's be honest, a guy like Zoo, he was damn near leaping up to try to hit him in the chin. So now the question is: if he fights Crawford, can Crawford leap up, hit that chin? If he fights the guy who allegedly he also might fight, who we had a stare down in the ring with, as well as a photo op, Earl Spence. Can Earl Spence do it? Which, by the way, I don't think Earl Spence should take that fight. Well, he will take it, but man, I I would hate to see him get that fight uh, over Crawford because I feel like Earl Spence is the last guy that would have a game plan to manage Fundora. I mean, he was beaten senseless by Crawford, and before that, the man nearly died via a drunk driving accident. So it's not like he's the, the Earl Spence of old, you know what I mean? I mean, of uh, of old school. He's now this corpse of himself. So I would hate that for him. Uh, but, yeah, it's like who is going to have the game plan to touch the chin? Because that man's chin's too damn high up. <laughs> you literally have to jump. Like, you have to stand on damn near an apple box just to be at fucking, you know, eye level with the man. So, so many questions now surround this. And even let's say a rematch does happen. Can Tim Zhu make the necessary adjustments to get in there and find that chin? Because again, unless you're close to that man's height, what's his height exactly that is build? It's gotta mm -hmm. be like, it's because it's gotta be something freakish. What is it? Five. Oh God. And he's fighting his middle reach. 80 inch reach and he's six, five who at middleweight can come close to even touching that chin. Mendoza found a way to do it, but he needed seven rounds. And when I even saw him do it, it was because Sebastian did the most lazy shit ever with his hands down. So it's like, who can do it? There's a lot of questions surrounding the future there. No question though. That Sunday was fucking boxing day. Oh, let's be perfectly honest, man. Yes. That was incredible. 
that was an incredible main event and honestly the undercard for the for the most part delivered what are your thoughts on uh on this one you know what? It's funny you say the undercard. It did deliver. Alan uh, Bobic uh, knocked out a cab driver, which I figured he would. Vidal really showed why he's the best cruiserweight in England right now. Uh, ben Whitaker put on a show, even ben though I was Whitt- hoping he'd get the knockout in the first round, but he put on a show. As yeah. He does. Yeah. Like put on a show, very anime walkout with the hookage uh, nod right there. Uh, but you know what? Put on a show. But I will say this. Uh, whoever he fights at, uh, so he, he's at 175, and I'm going to tell you this. There are some people at 75 that will not play with him. This Leon guy was a little too tentative because he's like, what is he going to do? When is he going to try to show ball? And he did. He had moments where Whitaker was pointing at the trainers of Leon saying, shut the fuck up, and he punched him, pointed again and said, shut the fuck up, and he punched him. Like he tried to do the, uh, the Max Holloway thing where uh, Ortega, where he put Ortega's up like, hey, this is how you block these punches, Ortega. It was kind of the same thing. Uh, so he, you know, he schooled a guy that was tentative, but I have a funny feeling that in the near future, he's going to get chinned by somebody that does not care about his antics. And he's not going to, because remember, there was a point in the fight where he was eating punches from the guy and uppercuts. he acted like, yeah, uppercuts. And he acted like he was hurt. I said, see, you don't want to play that game right there. <laughs> you don't want to do No, that. it was like between like the, what was it, like four, fourth or fifth round to like, I don't know. I want to even say like seven. There was like two or three rounds there where like Leon Willings like was still taking more shots, was still taking more damage, but right. he was landing some actually pretty hard shots just because Ben Whitaker wasn't covering up. And then it was like the last two rounds or even the last round. Ben Whitaker's coach is like, "You're like, wake the fuck up. You can do your thing, but like, don't get hit. Like, right. dance just, around, but dodge, man, dodge." <laughs> right. He he's gonna. The thing is, he has so much fun with this. I feel like he's going to play around with the wrong one. I have a funny feeling he's going to play around with the wrong one. And it's going to be somebody we least expect to. Ah, I love sorry, I love Pulse's video. comment oh. here. Ben Whitaker versus Robert Whitaker in a street fight. Only hands. <laughs> <laughs> ben, oh who's my got the better God. dance moves? <laughs> who's got the better say, footwork? <laughs> he's got the better footwork, and he's going to he's gonna uh, make sure he, he puts on a show for Robert Whitaker, I guess, before Whitaker is. <laughs> He's so open for Lee Left Hooks is crazy. He exits so bad because he gets too far in every time. Whitaker, that is, and he's right. Denial is correct. It, you, when you play too much like that and you leave yourself wide open like that, somebody with with a pack with a hard enough punch is going to put him down. So it's it's funny to watch him do it. But yeah, man, he's playing with fire with that. The other performance I got to say I was impressed with was with Dal Ridley who shut down. The wall. That was a nice little mention. But the main event, let's just go right to the main man. Jeez, man. In terms of boxing, ladies and gentlemen, this is fight of the year so far. So far, we still have a, a whole, we still have so many fights left. Uh, but so far this year, this is the fight of the year. This ended up being everything I thought it would be when I previewed it last week. Because while Fabio Worley is a dog and he proved how much dog he had in him, the fact that Fraser Clark pushed him past the seventh round, which is, the again, majority Fabio Worley fights did not go past round seven up until yesterday, but he was pushed to round seven, forced to bite down on the mouthpiece, try to fight back, and, you know, came up just short. But again, it just proves that this was the, uh, this was the thing that he needed to do. This was the fight that he needed, really. This was, this is what he needed to do in terms of improving, and this was the fight he needed uh, in terms of improving his skill overall. Because I can tell you right now, up until this point, Fabio was in some good fights, but nothing like this. Like, I don't even, like, not even Adelaide uh, in Saudi pushed him like this. Fraser Clark used that veteran experience. And a lot of people, uh, it's funny, a lot of pundits kind of downplayed it because it was amateur. But I said, that's not necessarily a smart thing to do because even as an amateur, it means that the moment's not too big for him. And the moment ended up not being too big for him at all. Oh, no. It, it was not too big for him. It was not a moment uh, that that um, that made Fraser Clark nervous. He was almost like, no, I'm supposed to be here. This is where I'm supposed to be. I know I'm good enough to beat you, and I'm going to prove it. And even though he was knocked down once, and he had that ridiculous point taken away, which was stupid, because that low blow, even though he tried to sneak in a shot, I think he meant to go to the body with it. So I don't agree with taking a point away there. But even so, this fight was exactly – really it did what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to push Fabio 
and really show us what he's made of in a 12 round sort of tilt. And as for Fraser Clark right here, not only did he prove he belonged, he proved that if he had gone, I'd say if he had gone pro earlier in his career, uh, probably would have had some more success. Uh, still very successful now, but man, if he would have turned pro earlier, I think he would have been a little further along in the career right now, but still that fight proved that he belonged. He, he 100% belongs. And we need a rematch to this because both are good enough to fight in Saudi full time for the big bag. Fabio already did it once. Fraser Clark proves that he's worthy of that. But honestly, these two need to fight again. And personally, I would love to see it in a bigger venue than the venue he was in. Now, it was nice, you know, 0-2 on a Sunday, Easter Sunday, very good fight. Honestly, you can put this in a you can put this in a football stadium now because the the beef is real. They hated each other before this. Now, imagine the build up now. Yeah, it's not say, settled. It, it's, right, it's not settled. Yeah, it's not settled. You know what I mean? As Jay Sharps was running back, it's not settled. Wardley got the knockdown, but Frazier destroyed his nose. Made that man. It, speaking of blood, you know, obviously Wardley bleeds in a lot of fights, but it wasn't like this, man. He like his nose was bloody, his eye was shut. You know what I mean? He was battered, bruised, and really he was beaten up in a way that he hasn't before. And you know. That then, as Andrew A said, and it was funny. I said, Down goes Fraser. That was case for me. Yeah, that was Fraser. That was funny. Anything, I wouldn't expect anything less from you. <laughs> oh man, it is funny because deep down, I was hoping he would at least get dropped once. In it. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and actually, Andrew A is right, man. His the one thing I would say I learned about Worley now through a 12 round tilt is that yes, his gas tank needs some serious improvement. Uh, gas by the eighth round, absolutely, man. That that was the thing I wanted to see because all of Fabio's fights ended in the seventh, so I knew he had cardio to go at least a little halfway through a twelve round fight. But I'd never seen him go all twelve, so I never really knew how good the cardio and endurance would be. And yeah, Andrew pretty much said, you know, the way Clark was pushing him and pressuring him and forcing him to fight back, yeah, that man needs to work a little bit on the endurance, but. At least we now know that he he has the enough dog in him to last because he could have easily just shit the bed there and just let it go. But nah, he's got something. The fact that they went twelve rounds like that was insane. And I remember going into that last round. I, I'm thinking this is probably the first boxing fight I've seen in a long time where we are going into the twelfth round and we do not have a winner. I could not think of that of the last time. And when you have a fight that good. It really it tells you that uh, it tells you we're dealing with something special here. So one hundred percent. Not only does it need to be run back, I would love for Eddie Hearn to get his hands on this, but I feel like the zone already has their hands tied up with the fight. So yeah, Boxer and Shalom are probably going to book this. I would say on another Sunday, which is good, by the way. I don't mind a, a Sunday afternoon boxing card. I, I don't mind. Good. I don't mind an early afternoon, but if it digs into my Fury FC, I'm sorry. I I'm agree. watching Fury FC, baby. <laughs> I do. No, I do agree with that. And you know what? I was a little shocked that the main card didn't start to one because I believe when I did Masternak and Billum Smith, that was their last Sunday boxing show. It started like noon, and it was done by like Fury FC hours. You know, yeah, like eleven a.m. Main I think card is yeah. usually around what four thirty or or I guess five thirty Eastern. I'm on Central yeah. Time, so I'm always one hour behind. But I think it's around yeah. five thirty Eastern is usually their main cards, and they they start their amateur prelims at like fucking two because they have like so many amateur fights that they roll through there, which right. I, I don't mind. And they, they show them on YouTube, you know, for the friends and family and they're, they're quick fights, right? Cause the amateur time and everything. And then they get to the good stuff. Yeah. Around, you know, right before dinner time. So I like that. And yeah. There, there was some like early afternoon morning boxing. Um, dude, I'd be totally game for that on Sunday, man. Absolutely brother. But I agree. Um, they gotta, they gotta push that start time a little further back. Cause I remember like 11 AM, 1130 years when they kicked off. So yeah, a little late this time, but nonetheless, it was good, and it was a rare W for boxing. And I got to say, man, not only rematch, they it's good enough to put be put on pay-per-view. I just hope they don't do that, <laughs> obviously, for selfish reasons. But it was good enough to where if it's on pay-per-view, I, I could completely understand, honestly, justifying that decision because the fight was that damn good. Yeah, and Slappy, we'll get to UFC in the in hour two here. And uh, Shane was just joining us. So what's up, Shane? He said, uh... Who you guys taking Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson? Have you already talked about it? You know me, oh, Shane. I, I, I'm, I'm apathetic when it comes to Jake Paul. I've said it many times. Like the fact that he's using his money and actually training and, and getting better, like props to him. Unlike 
the other celebrities doing celebrity boxing and YouTuber boxing. He's actually taking it seriously. So I respect that. But at the end of the day, the fights ain't good. And I'm I'm done seeing him beat beat up the legends that I grew up watching. You know, I'm just, I'm done. Like, I don't want to yeah. see that shit anymore. Like, I mean, hey, it's, uh, even though it is better than, um, than him beating up another MMA legend, the only thing I hate about this is, uh, it is, it's clearly a farce because Mike Tyson is too old to be doing the shit. And Jake Paul knows exactly what he's doing by uh, paying him to take part in this. And I have a, and, and here's what's fucked up. It's not going to be as fun as what people, uh, as what some people no, might think it might be. It's, it's not, not. going to be fun. No, it is not going to be fun. It's Jake not. Paul fighting other boxers, even mailmen, even Amazon drivers with a record is more fun than this shit. Exactly. It, it will, and, it will be like, and it's, by the way, and, and by the way, Jojo mentioned uh, Amazon was on point. Like, see, like Jojo, for example, he's like you, Isha. He's a big kickboxing MMA guy, loves oh, the regional up, Jojo? scene, not big into the UFC. I mean, he likes it, but he's like you, man, loves the underground stuff. For him to say that Amazon was on point is huge. Like, that's how big the card was this weekend and how good of a weekend boxing had. It impressed people that normally aren't that impressed with boxing. And when boxing does that, that's when the sport progresses. But again, it's rare because unfortunately we're going to get more fuckery down the line. But uh, this was one of those weekends for boxing where it was a rare W all around. And they even, and honestly, I put it above the UFC this weekend. UFC, obviously, you can throw that in the bin. Uh, other MMA did well, but boxing, rare W this weekend. Very rare. For them oh, the, the regionals absolutely blew the UFC out of the water. This oh, weekend. no we'll question. get to that. We'll get to that in an hour or two, but let's turn the page and talk a little bit about one championship before we yes. actually show love to the regional MMA shows, Cage Warriors and LFA in particular. This weekend, double header for one championship. Both shows at the Lupini Boxing Stadium, but one Friday fight. So if you're on Pacific time, set your alarm early, get some coffee oh, yeah. brewing, at least for the second half of the card, because holy mother fuck Jay is the one Friday fights early card a thousand times better than the Amazon fight night. Oh my oh. God. Let's just quickly go over it here. We don't think like going through it in depth, but for those of you who, uh, who follow one championship, who follow the Muay Thai and kickboxing there, super bon out of the shackles, actually fighting again in Shachi's promotion, oh, yeah. going up against a Marag Gregorian. Are you kidding me? This is, this is a huge Huge fight. We all wanted to see it. So excited for that one. Our boy, the Canadian Italian, John DeBella, taking Love on Prangenchai. Are you kidding me? For the belt in the co main, Nongo, Nongo fighting again. Sword Joke Piek. Like, that's an amazing fight. I'm scared for Nongo. Don't get me wrong. But fight. that's my fight of the main card right there. Nongo and, um, and Kulabdam. That's going to be, be great. It's going to be great. Way, I'm scared for Nongo, but it's going to be great. And Sexon is going to be on this card too. Yes. Before that, Mung Thai. Like, dude, this is insane how good this card, her card is, right? It's, it's, it's honestly one of the best cards they put on on a Friday morning. And the best part about it is... Zang uh, is on the card too, for fuck's sake. Right. Like, you have... The, this is a Striker's Paradise card. You're not going to see any MMA fights, no grappling on this shit, thank God. But one thing you're going to see is you're going to see high-level strikers and you're going to see some fun fights. The main event uh, is for an interim belt that unfortunately... Uh, Chingis Alizov, uh, unfortunately, that's for Chingis Alizov in his division right there, uh, which is very unfortunate. But I will say this if Superbon wins that, I would love to see Alizov, Superbon maybe go again because I mean, hey, Gregorian and Superbon, I mean, Gregorian and um, Alizov, we've already seen that a lot, but him and Superbon will be a fun one, uh, to book again. Uh, Debella finally making the comeback, man. I've been waiting to see Debella for a little bit, and against Prajunchai is extremely dangerous. I mean, that's under kickboxing rules, too, by the way. Yeah. Prajunchai is an exceptional kickboxer to Thailand, and, of course, you can throw him in Thai rules, and he's fine, but that's going to be a wild one right there. Sexon, just spoiler, he's going to knock out the Japanese dude. I mean, I mean Sexon yeah, they're, they're, doesn't... They're giving, him, they're giving him a can. They're giving him a layup so that he can hopefully knock on wood, fingers crossed, fight fucking Liam Harrison next for both it's, of their retirement fights. Yes. I Sex and versus Liam Harrison oh. retirement fight. I want that so bad. That's the one fight from Glory, like from one championship in terms of Muay Thai that I really want. Dude. That one, and there's like a short list, but that's on it. I, I think Zhang's gonna actually destroy this guy too. But again, this like I agree. It could be a main event because Zhang's that big of a name. Former title challenger as well. And you know oh. what? China does have some exceptional talent in kickboxing. They're not showcased a lot on these cards, but when they are, I'm I'm usually impressed. 
and we got a Calgarian on the card too, Jake Peacock oh, from God. Canada. Let's fucking go. By the way, folks, for those that don't know who Jake Peacock is, he is the Muay Thai version of Nick Newell, as in he has only one arm. I'm not joking. Bro he's, got fight. A, he's got a wicked left hook, though, I hear. Yes. He, he, that's his only... Yeah, literally, literally has an, a left arm and two legs. Homeboy ain't got a right arm, but he whoops ass, which is insane to me. It, it's crazy whenever I – like, I, I've seen highlights of this guy, and I'm like, yo, how does somebody do all that with one fucking arm in a sport like Muay Thai? It, it's, it's truly incredible. It's truly incredible, and I'm excited that one championship gave him this opportunity. I really am. Uh, Absolutely, man. It's it's gonna be a fun one. And uh, honestly, in terms of Friday cards, last week was fun, but this one's gonna be even more fun because it's just strikers paradise up and down. This They're one could be a pay per view. It's so good. Not that I want oh, one champion to do any pay per views because I think that's fucking bullshit. Given that we have to pay for Amazon anyways, but right. like that one is pay per view caliber, right? It is. And it then is. they follow it up with oh, this fucking God. shit. Are you kidding me? Now yeah. Regan or Cell amazing love regan or cell um alexis nichols it, a good opponent as well for him i don't mind grappling when it's through tolo brothers i don't like it as the co-main i'd rather have it earlier in the card because let's be honest if you're not into grappling which i am so like i don't hate it but it is a buzz kill when it's the co-main event i'm sorry especially coming uh off of you know this potential war between these two guys um right. I like Ben Tynan. Again, I'm biased because I'm Canadian and he just walks out in the Canadian tuxedo shirts not giving a fuck. But he's he's a grappler first and foremost, right? Right. Um, and, you know, Cade is earlier on the card, which is fine. Ugh. But just, like, compared to the names on the the Friday fights, man, it's like, I don't know. It's just, like, this This essentially, it, like, if this was Ryzen with, like, the 18 fucking fights, this, or, or K1, this this whole card would be the undercard. This would be the people's yes. main event, you know, the featured fight, and then we'd go to the... You know the, what? The you on know the what? If they took Regi and Erso off that main event, I bet you nobody would watch this. Oh, absolutely. I'm not even joking. If Regian to me is the draw for those that have never seen him, an exceptional kickboxer, literally oh, one of the best so in the world. The problem, though, is unfortunately he's being promoted by a guy that uses kickboxing as a pawn and basically as a tool. Uh, doesn't really put as much effort into it as he could. Uh, but Regian is, as I'd say, probably one of the best talents in the world. The man has literally not fought in a year. <laughs> Dude, the, and, uh, yeah. The first fight against Cincinnati, I I recommend every single one of you go check yes, it out. That was a war. He silenced and anyone silenced, who man. doubted him in that second one when he landed that left hook to the body and dropped him in the fourth. And by the way, his last knockout over Dimitri, oh. it was so brutal that at first I thought maybe the punch had missed, but when I saw it, he actually hit him directly in the skull and he rebooted that man's brain with a punch, and it was one of the more nasty ones I'd ever seen. Dude, look that, at some of the names he has on his res uh, resume as well. Holdskin, Na Natawat, Jake Purdy. Oh, I man. Mean, my Nikki, God. Nikki Holdskin is a name I haven't seen in a good while. I'd love to see it. Jojo Natawat's a good one as well. By the way, Nikki Holdskin, one of the best kickboxers uh, in the world in his weight class, and the fact that he beat him twice is exceptional. That's actually one of those resume builders right there that not a lot of people talk about. No, absolutely. So, again, unfortunate for those, especially on Pacific time, like right. my boy Shane in the live chat, who, you know, it's damn early to get up, you know, for, for one championship Friday fights. But yeah. if there's any day to wake up early, if there's any day, even to get up halfway through the event so you can catch, like, at least, the at the very least, the co-main and main, it, it's it's this Friday's Friday fights. Now, one championship, kind of like some UFC fight nights, you know, we're, we're dogging on the fight night card. It might deliver, right? It, it, right. It, it, they always have the potential to deliver, and I find one championship kind of, delivers more than the ufc when we kind of dog on those cards of course but just it's it's not the same it's not even in the same stratosphere as as, uh, as the friday fights card it's funny because honestly if one literally just did friday fights and then would put on like a special pay-per-view every now and again that would be a better model than their prime because right now Friday fights is way more entertaining, even though they use it as their, you know, to get people contracts. But really, more people watch that, I feel. Even when they don't watch it live, so many people tell me that they watch the replays when they go to work and shit. In the morning. I'm, so I'm one of like, I haven't been able to stream. I know you You always hold down the fort. So big shout oh, out to yeah. the Rush 
our crew every um, Friday, every Friday. I, I've just going. been so busy these last few weeks. So I just, I just literally haven't been able to have had to get work done or I've been literally up all night on Thursday. And then I like just need to get some sleep. So, Oh, trust I me. You, promise you, my chat. JC, if you're watching, I promised you, you're holding me to it. I'm doing it Friday morning. <laughs> Oh, and listen, if he didn't hold you to it, I would, because this is the one Friday morning card I don't think anybody wants to miss. Like, if you have to, if you're one of those people with a tight work schedule, develop a cough around Wednesday. You know what I mean? Like, like start it Tuesday, uh, intensify it to about medium level cough Wednesday. By Thursday, you need to be hacking up to the point where your boss thinks you're going to die. And then usually around Thursday, your boss will be like, you know what, get get the hell out of here. Let, let's, let's see. We'll see you Monday. And then boom, you got Friday off. Trust me, people, it works. You don't believe me? Just ask people like um, Idaho Skatesman in my chat, for example. He did it, and it worked for him. There Absolutely. are some people, yeah, dead serious. Just develop it, develop it by Tuesday, by Thursday, intensify it. Boom, you get Friday off. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to the regional scene in mixed martial arts. As there was a ton of regional cards this last weekend and a lot of them carried the torch for mixed martial arts pancrase was awesome cage warriors was awesome but let's start with lfa here and, and one quick thing shout out to mark coleman was at the lfa event looking looking better than he has as of late i know he's been dealing with a lot of health issues obviously there's that whole story of him being an absolute oh, hero you know uh, when his house caught on fire act literally saving lives um, good to see him, you know, up and at him at an, at an MMA event. So this, this just warmed my heart here. This just warmed my heart here, but man, we got to talk about not the whole card. Cause you know, we'll, we'll be here all night. If you know, you get me going about regional MMA all night, but the main event for LFA 180, Lance Lawrence against Ooh. Landry Ward. Landry Ward was the favorite, ladies and gentlemen. And one of the reasons why is because this guy has cardio for days and he's right. got an iron chin. The man cannot be finished. The man does not stop walking forward. He is literally a goddamn zombie. It, seriously, Lance Lawrence, though, credit to him. He was there he met him in the middle and he was the aggressor despite landry ward continuing to walk forward won the first two rounds with flying fucking carpets those trailer park boys fans will appreciate that third round slowed down and landry ward just doesn't slow down he just doesn't slow down but unbelievable fight again one of the better underdog wins that I've seen in a long time given that he knocked down ward dude no joke he rocked him like five or six times, even in the opening minute. Let's watch some of these highlights. Well, oh! oh! He drops a lone star oh! Oh, God damn. Oh. I saw him hit the deck. Oh, oh shit. God. That was one minute in. Okay, here's another one halfway through the fight. Got him down. Oh, oh Heather Fisk coming oh. down. Oh. oh. Just misses. Crowd on their feet. Oh, right, right. Oh, as tough as they come. That guy is tougher than a two. And Lawrence, state. like he was smart and on hundred percent draining the gas tank in this situation, like knowing that this guy actually might survive, right? Right. And survive he did oh, into the yeah. third round, dude. Oh, his, his leg, he can't walk right now. His leg is compromised. And he's oh, attacking. And Lawrence oh, puts so many oh, leg kicks, bro. So many leg kicks. And just skating all around and whatnot. Anyways, can't show much more. Go check out LFA's main event there, man. It was nothing short of outstanding. Like, it it could be one of the fights of the year so far. Now, was it the most polished fight? No, but it was look, it was right. levels above like Griffin, Steph, and Bonner, right? Like it was a savage fight, but actually, like there was some skill involved. And uh, I, I was just losing my mind. I didn't stream the whole event because I, I, I was doing BKFC, but after BKFC, we jumped over to uh to do that event and i'm so blessed that i was able to catch that uh man that's that main event because it was nothing short of spectacular if you guys got fight pass go check it out uh lfa might have posted it on their youtube channel already they they tend to post uh their fights on their youtube channel uh yeah, they, usually do. they usually do they're probably up there right now actually all right, another fight I want to get to. This wasn't a main card fight. Hell, this wasn't... I, I believe this was still on the prelims of a Cage Warriors 169, which that entire card delivered, ladies and gentlemen. If you, if you got five hours and a half to spare, fire up Cage Warriors 169. Unbelievable card this weekend. It was... It, 
quite frankly, it was better than the UFC fight night, but that wasn't a huge bar. But this fight was very interesting because it was one-way traffic the whole fight. The whole fight, Angus Hewitt actually pieced up good. Despite Hewitt being more of a grappler, he would land some really hard and surprising for me fast hooks to set up the takedown he got in the top position passed to side control passed the half guard got into full mount repeat ground and pound repeat mitchell good survived the <laughs> survived the full mount and half guard and side control basically ground and pound because he kept as a defensive move kept going for the motherfucking buggy choke and no joke three times before he eventually got it with 30 seconds left in the third round. You could hear his coach, let it go. Let (laughs) it go. You're not going to get it. Escape the position every time. 30 seconds left. He knew he lost the fight. Like dude, like the, the the first round could have been a 10, eight for Hewitt. I honestly think it was like, it was that much of an ass beaten 30 seconds left. Scores a freaking buggy choke. It was one of the best comebacks I've seen in a long time. Chokes often, man. That, oh my God. I'm getting chills just watching that, bro. Unbelievable. One of the coolest Whoa. and wildest submissions in, uh, well, in jujitsu and mixed martial arts, man. Unbelievable. Bro, that's crazy, man. That motherfucker was turning about three different colors before he finally tapped out. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yes. He was. Willie Walker. <laughs> All right, before we uh, just highlight what's coming up in the week of combat sports, let's take some of your guys' comments. Let's take some okay. of your guys' comments. He went let's Dana Pink. He went Dana Purple. Oh, fucking Dana uh, Pink and Purple. Dude was getting creative. It was, man. Damn. Craig Jones smiling somewhere. Doing oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, Craig Jones. <laughs> oh, my God. That was awesome, boys. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love uh, that. What's up, Fishing with H? Good to see you. Love it. Uh, plenty of perks for an exclusive member, my <laughs> man. I love that. I Issue with the little side jabs. Love, love the that. whole Cage Warriors card. Absolutely love it. Oh, Activate A, don't remind me. I had Angus plus 145. But yeah, because the whole time uh, Activate is like easy money. This is how I said it was going to happen. And, and throughout the fight, I'm like, yeah, dude, Activate A. He's got a good pulse on Cage Warriors and actually a lot of regional MMA as well. So big shout out to Activate A for everything he contributes to our community. Oh, um, see, I got it. Okay, good. I got to ask him now when I start doing some of them cards. I absolutely. Buggy show. Yes, sir. I love that. Hey, it was good to see his T. Oh, shit. I know he checked that one out. Actually, I think he posted that one, funny enough, uh, which is where I saw some of it. Yo, the fact that that man turned about three different shades before he went out. Like, I don't think I've seen that in a good while. Yeah. Um, And in regards to the LFA fight, we got some comments here. Hank saying, if, uh, if I took that much punishment... Uh, and, oh, and lose absolutely, absolutely, and I mean, hell, I did kickboxing growing up, but I know, I know for a fact, you get kicked enough in your legs, you're saying fuck that. So that man's a savage. Uh, his foot was a balloon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, I love how denial talks in gifts and uh, emojis, and I'm and I'm it. speaking his language now. <laughs> I love it. It's like I'm stoned enough to where I understand it, so I'm on that level. <laughs> yeah. uh, his leg and foot was so swollen the next day. Yep. Yeah, uh, and Kush, man. Yeah, yeah. You were. Uh, we were getting there. We were getting there. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But man, I got dude, I love that JoJo's original guys. Well, JoJo, we're gonna be fucking best friends, dude. Because I'm the I'm that crazy motherfucker staying up to watch Deep Pancrace as oh, well yeah. as covering all the regional shows. I'm going to LFA 181 uh, this Friday, by the way. What's funny is I'm actually covering the LFA fight this weekend with a uh, Guzzi with Alvin Hines. So, and yes, I promised sir. him I'd do it. So actually, I am covering that this weekend. I um, owe I owe Guzzi a couple beers from his last win and for jumping on my sh- my last podcast episode before we had Liam Harrison on. So uh, hell yeah, yeah. I owe him a couple. I owe him a couple beers as well. Combat Sports Today says who's running the KSW live stream this week. Uh, if they if if Isha can put in a good word to them not to fuck with me this time, then hey, maybe I could work something out with that. Because <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now that UFC card this Saturday gonna be some shit. So I'm actually gonna be watching KSW before that. So I, I'm I'm gonna see what I can do. Activate it was hoping for a slam on the buggy choke. Yes, because there was a in BFL. Oh, remember that that big Persian uh wrestler in BFL in the uh Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada League. 
which I think is better than unified now, but I might be a little biased being, you know, a West Coast Canadian guy. Actually, but well, anyway, well, I, I can vouch for you. I agree. Oh, thank you. Thank you. As a, as a non-biased motherfucker, I agree. Yeah, with thank you. you. Thank you. you. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here. But uh, yeah, the that Persian fighter got in a buggy choke and, and basically just started slamming the dude and ended up getting a slam <laughs> TKO. And that was uh, the broadcasters were swearing. They were like, holy shit. And I was like, hey, you can't say that on the live broadcast. They're like, oop, oop, sorry, sorry. But they just couldn't even contain themselves. It was so crazy. And what's up, Phil? Uh, Combat Sports Today, guys. Go check them out on uh, everywhere, but on Twitter yeah. especially. They're doing great Combat things. Combat Sports Today. And by the way, definitely check them out because, um, well, let's just say they asked me uh, to, to give my thoughts on kickboxing. So look out for that. A little, a little, a little drop that they're going to be doing soon about uh, so, basically my rantings on the sport. So uh, I might just have to like hand the baton to Jay. Maybe I do like the first half of K or of KSW. You do the second half. <laughs> you know what? I like that idea. We might have to do that. Like fucking like like marathon runners or what's that? What's that? The, the relay, the relay race. Yeah, because I I think off. the Minnesota Wild game starts at like two thirty or three thirty, and KSW starts. That's my time. Right. So, um, and I think K or KSW starts at like. 11 or noon your time 11 my time. so okay. we'll figure it out we'll, but hey either yeah, both of us or, or or jay we'll cover a chunk of the show at least because it's going to be in paris parnes is fighting it's going to be an absolutely amazing card and personally there. that'll be more entertaining than watch chris curtis cry about whatever brennan allen's going to do to him on his man dance show Right. Ah, there he you still go, does man. that shit. Uh, and by the way, Jack Quez wants us to stream 300 together. Oh, we're both going to be live for UFC 300, even though I feel like that's going to be some fuckery. But uh, and by the way, RWS Japan I saw is right after 300, like directly oh. after it. Oh, that is going to be a marathon for your boy because all the ties are going to literally want my head on a platter if I don't uh, <laughs> if I don't fucking cover that. Yeah, you, that. you know, Jen, I know. If there's if there's Muay Thai kickboxing in Japan, we're covering it. So yeah, oh, we're staying yeah, up all night for that one, buddy. From, from what I understand, it's like right after 300. So it's like you know what I mean. It's perfect. Oh, Anthony, what the heck was that name called that, uh, that event? They do it every year, and Kaposa and everyone on Twitter just goes fucking ham for it. There was a, there was a dude in street clothes. There was a dude on YouTube who was actually showing the fight and commentating it. <laughs> I can't <What>? think. <laughs> I should I should know this us being you know the 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 combat sports show here and it's probably bookmarked on my Twitter you know in between uh, when Is we take a like, break um, yeah when it's we take like a break going into hour two I'll find it I'll find it but yeah that shit's wild man that Is shit's it wild Peruvian bare knuckle or some shit something like that is it in Peru I know it's just out no, It's in Mexico. It's just an oh, event okay. they do every year. You okay. literally, it, it's kind of like that uh, West Virginia strongman where you just like literally sign a waiver and show yeah. up and you fight in the clothes you got on. It's okay. it's a wild dude. And it's outside and everything. It's crazy. Shit, sounds like my, my vibe. Hey, appreciate you, Dylan. Good to see you, my yeah, man. See this Sunday too. Oh, perfect. I need something to watch in the background Sunday. Uh, let's see. Base TJ, Chris gonna be thrown. Temper tantrums. Why be stuck at Avgar? If it is real shit, Chris Curtis. Here's the thing about Chris Curtis that I think is hilarious. I love that him and Sean are friends because they seem like complete polar opposites. Sean is more like, if I fail, it is what it is. If Chris Curtis does it, he's going to have a whole 45-minute dissertation about how he was fucked over in his mind. And I can promise you nobody wants to hear it, but he's going to make sure people do it anyway. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, have you seen the Roadhouse movie yet? Uh, no, but I have a lot of people that are begging me to do some sort of review about it. And you know what? One day I do plan on, you know what? Uh, there is some, it's pretty slow this week in terms of fights. Maybe I'll break out to tequila, watch it, and then I'll roast it on this program. Who knows? I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard that it's, you know, kind of like a UFC fight night. If you don't set your expectations too high, it's a fun action movie. But if you're going and thinking it's going to be like an Oscar worthy movie, it's going to suck. That That's kind of what I've heard. I haven't seen it yet either. Shit, that's perfect. Let's see. Yeah, Pit is Sunny too. I like watching his promotion, so I'm yep. definitely gonna check that out. It's uh I would say it's more on the A1 combat level right now, but as far mm -hmm. as the production, it's it's way better. It's way better. And the live show is amazing. I have friends who live out that way and they go to every single show. Pulse like no if we can review 300. You're probably gonna be busy as shit to do it. So Pulse, I will definitely do it. Just hit me up, bro. Um. We're yeah, I'll be doing PFL on Thursday. I'll be yeah, doing PFL to, on Thursday. Yeah, I'm about to say he's gonna he's gonna do that because I'm I'm just gonna be real with you. I'm just gonna shit on PFL the whole time, and that's gonna be funny for like the first week. But after a few, they're gonna be like, okay, we get it. So it's best that he should cover it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Because I'm gonna be fucking vicious. Yeah, man. People um, must think they're so cool. I hate the UFC. The slow pro promotion. Nobody knows about is way better. 
Hey, JL, you hear me say it all the time. If we're going to talk about entertainment wise, there are there are a handful of leagues that are way more entertaining than the UFC. But the UFC is the NFL, the NHL, the MLB of mixed martial arts. It's I do it's pretty black it was, and white in that sense. I do think it was funny that at the at Atlantic City card, there's a video of a couple that got up and walked out <laughs> during the main event, and then you see like they pan away, and there's some other bro. Shots I, I have a friend who was there who like, walked out. <laughs> really? Oh shit! Oh, that's yeah. right. You told me about that. Good to see you, by the way, Adrian. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Let's see. You see? Oh, go ahead. Let's see, saying Congress no. thing to be different, KSW. Eh, I mean, hey, I don't know about that. Nobody would go that. Yeah, far, I don't think but... anyone has said that, Jail. Like maybe if, the incels that you read on the YouTube comments and Twitter. Right. Which how many times have I said, like, don't let those people fire you up? They, they be trolling, be, bro. They right. be trolling. I was about to say, if anybody trolls you like that, don't listen to it. Now, if they're saying it'll be better than the fight night, then yeah, they're definitely right. Hey, I'll put, they're I'll right still put up KSW Coliseum two up against UFC three hundred. Like I gotta oh, see UFC 300, but like after that, then I'll make I'm, I might even make a video because KSW Coliseum 2 was the best MMA show I've ever seen in my entire life. When is PFL signing Arjun Bular? Oh God, oh, God, I don't think they can afford him. I don't think they can afford him because see, listen, Bular, you can't just sign him. You have to bend to his terms. That's why one. That's the only way one got him in the ring after he held a belt hostage for two years. So unfortunately, they can't afford him, and thank God they can't. Ooh. Hank, I've, I have not said that. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh, my God. They're turning me into the friggin' regional Ariel Hawani over here. My God. I love it. Let's ACA 168 see, uh, was the best in 2023, but Coliseum 2 was the it best. Looks like, by the way, I think Gunscal found the name. It's called, what is it, Chivarito? And it's in Guatemala. And I'm at, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. That's 100% okay. what it is. Yeah, that's 100% yeah. what it is. And I saw it too, because it was like, like you said, it was women in dresses and 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 grown men in jeans, just bare knuckle bra, bra. And I'm like, oh, what is this? This is lit. To, to close off your back, you sign up and just walk in. It, it's incredible. It. All right, guys, it. we've gone a little bit over. We've gone a little bit over uh, today in hour one. So we're gonna take a quick break. On the other side, we'll be back to talk about JL's favorite promotion, the <laughs> UFC, the one and only, and this amazing card that JL loves so much. This last weekend, back with the Rust City Fight Show, hour two on the other side. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. Yeah. A good shepherd gave life to the sheep. Leash nice, but nah, he ain't nice underneath. Got a price on a leash, I don't trust when he speak. Be trying to real spite for the meat. Why I bleed with the best, got the people, the eagle, and dimes, I done feed with the flesh, trying to smeagle the race. You believe that I'm blessed, got a speed to the left. Got all my clothes, and be eager to mess. Oh no, might put her on a roster. I bet she gon' dread it, take all my betters, run through it like betters, might make her a tenant. The way that she moving it, highly attentive. She speak a little Spanish, and so does a man. I can tell by his panic, a phone blowing up like a goddess. He must be the battery. Beat it up, let me finish. Confidence, eight feet tall. All of my business can't see dust. Got on my side, I can't see dust. Tell the chauffeur, don't slam my dust. Speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. Yeah, I done seen it up, seen it up, seen it up. Yeah, I done seen it up. Make condition life save a mint money. Make bail like a mint. Send a behavior, cause baby gon' give me that again and again. I repent. Capo gonna bleed him when the Last thing you saw was a Van Gogh. Sorry, night bullets fly, what's new? Sip a hot chai in the war zone. Keep it on the low, low, no, don't die here. Been po po since 12. Put the look on my girl, a trip to Hawaii. She took to her ex and I took that L. Had to exhale, double exhale. Transcendental, yeah, I meditate well. Not the only one that's keeping me still. Not the only one that's keeping me still. Hey, yo, yo, we got all the, all the, all the dollars. Hey, uh, what y'all doing? Hit a mail, blew the check, money verified. Back to back shows, that's a marathon. Feel like Farrakhan, now they Farrakhan. Saying out the media, give me a clear mind. I'm a media, you no matter where I line, I still rock shit. On the hot list, ain't list, you a not this. Got a brain, but I never will get on top picks. My bliss, on a pedestal, take no offense. I ain't no hero, I ain't no hero. Commas and, commas and zeros. You know I need those. Money the root of all evil, fruit is forbidden. Treating knowledge made the filthiest dollars we spending on Eve. Out of my please, out of my, out of my please. Confidence, eight feet tall. All of my business, can't see dust. Got on my side, I can't see dust. Tell the chauffeur, don't slam my dust. Speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. Yeah, I done seen enough, seen enough, seen enough. Yeah, I done seen enough. Taught to be nice. 
nice. Ain't about winning, don't talk to me twice. I don't play dice. I'll make a move on the board, it's precise. The fuck is the price? I took a fiddle and dipped it in ice. I took a call and now I'm on a flight. Crew heading east, got a book in the night. First stop is Atlanta. I got breakfast plans at the Waffle House. Hour two, we are back live here on the Rush City Fight Show. Hour two means it's beer o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. Damn right. Not that I <laughs> didn't have enough of that over the weekend, but uh, it is what it is. Let's Shit. freaking go. Beer time somewhere. Hit time. Cheers, time. my brother. Cheers. All right. Hour two, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive into UFC fight night and all the fuckery that occurred as well as some other UFC topics. We also have a hockey fight to react to a hockey player who is still playing at the age of 52 in the LNAH JL, I imagine's favorite hockey league. Uh, <laughs> given he doesn't like uh, regional MMA, I'm sure he loves every other pro league outside of the NHL. Um, <laughs> and who also has fought in MMA, one MMA fight in TKO. We Love also, it. like I said, have a few other UFC tidbits to talk about. And then we have two amazing highlights from Pancrase. We have a new king and a new queen of Pancrase, ladies and gentlemen. And Pancrase, by the way, lowered their pay-per-view price from $30 to $13 USD. So there's no excuse if you like Japanese MMA, ladies and gentlemen. Before we dive into the UFC Fight Night recap, I uh, just quickly want to highlight what's coming up this week in the world of combat sports, starting with Pro or Fury Pro Grappling 9 on Thursday, two hours before PFL uh, 1. We also have BYB 25. That's right. Denial's favorite, B, uh, Bare Knuckle. I, I, I highly recommend watching Dada over watching PFL any day of the week. So go yeah. ahead. <laughs> you know what? I may have to make that my Thursday indulgence. Thank you. Thank you, Dada. At least you gave me something to watch on a Thursday. I appreciate that. Uh, Friday, we have some Japanese boxing, the greatest boxing volume 46, which should be an awesome, awesome card. Obviously, we went over one Friday fights 58, one Friday, one fight night 21, and of course, LFA 181 in Minnesota, Ooh. which yours truly will be there. Still guzzling these down and hanging out with our boy Alvin Guzzi Hine, who's gonna get another win this weekend and hopefully, uh, Hopefully, rack up a few more at heavyweight on the regional scene and get that call to contender series. Because if he puts together, way, he puts together a streak. The UFC they need heavyweights, man. They need heavyweights. By the way, this is actually this is probably the most LFA coverage people will get because you're going to be there. I'm going to be commentating it. So shit, we. Pretty I'll be live tweeting up. it. I'll be uh, right, I'll be making a vlog live. out of it as well with right. mixed footage from the last one I went to to this one. I just didn't get enough footage last time to kind of tell a story in the vlog. So I'm going to film a lot in this one and then actually put together just a really cool uh a really cool kind of recap of like my experience going to LFA two different shows and kind of the differences of how they put together both uh both cards and and what and what it means for Minnesota MMA moving forward uh like Saturday it. Cage Warriors 170 KSW 93 an amazing KSW card by the way guys it's absolutely stacked head to toe BKFC 60 uh, we got Hitchens versus Lemos in boxing, and oh my goodness, there's so much Japanese MMA this weekend, guys. Like, seriously, we got Deep in Nagoya Impact 2024 Saturday night, and well, it, like, it doesn't stop. There's three cards in a row. Then we have Deep Nagoya Impact 24 Part 2, which is literally just like a few hours after on Sunday. That's Anthony crazy. Pettis FC 10. Deep Tokyo Impact 2024 Second Round. Shuto Tokyo Volume 46 and UWC 52 to wrap up uh, Sunday. So, so much Japanese MMA. Um, three deep cards and one Shuto card as well. So that's what's coming up this week in the world of mixed martial arts let's talk about what went down this last weekend in regards to the ufc let's just start with this let's just rip the band-aid right off gary copeland all right gary copeland that fucking uh oh, who said it in my live chat that uh micro that microwaved looking brock lesnar uh, <laughs> respect everything he did to serving the united states and the military, I really do, but I'm not talking about his service to the military. I'm talking about his service to mixed martial arts here. And if if somebody if somebody threw Brock Lesnar in a dryer machine and then he walked out, it would be Gary Copeland. Yeah, it's the Tiny Tim version of Brock Lesnar. Um, <laughs> look, I respect, uh, <laughs> and no pun intended, but I respect his balls in deducting a point for those uh for those groin strikes 
in the one fight uh, with with uh, Kyle Nelson. But other than that, he missed eye pokes. He missed cage grabs. A few early stoppages. There's some where I can play devil's advocate and be like, you know what? Like he was going down anyways, and literally like, he saved him from like three more big shots. That's fine. But let's let's be oh, honest. Yeah. Overall, when you think of that fight card, you think early stoppages. Jay, I ask you, and then the chat as well here. Was it an off night, or is this the norm for him? Because I recall him being trigger hungry in the PFL as well. He, th- I was about to say, th- this is on brand for Mini Lesnar. Like you said, he's pulled the trigger early many times before. He also, like, he, he mishandled a good amount of things, man. He even mishandled the shit with Weidman and Silva with the eye pokes. He's mismanaged uh, a good amount of fights, whether it's he's a little trigger happy or he seemed kind of confused on how to handle a certain situation, like with the eye pokes I mentioned. He, he just seems like a guy that's very inconsistent. And half the time... Unless there's a fight where it's just straight up fight and nothing weird happens, he's fine. But once once he's called upon to do something and show some authority, he, he's very confused half the time. And he does it not with a lot of like a short. He's quite frankly looking on the sides all the time. He's not exactly like, you know, he's not somebody that feels like he's in control. So I agree. He's somebody that needs to uh, kind of be pushed to the side there. I don't like him as a ref. I agree with no chill MMA. Bad ref. Bad ref. To screw up so many times is unacceptable. And and to screw up so many times in different areas. Like, it wasn't just the eye pokes. It wasn't just the early stoppages. He missed some key cage grabs. I mean, we'll talk about the Luke Buckley fight. We'll talk about the key moments of that card. But, like, you know, Buckley... Buckley's, like, blatantly grabbed the cage grab. And we all were yelling at it. And I was like, dude, where is... Where is he? Where is Copeland? Like, what the hell? The man's having a cigarette and reading the paper that morning. Like, what the fuck? I hate local refs and oh uh, boy, especially when they go overseas and do it. But th- this was particularly bad because with Gary Copeland, like you said, we've seen him across some of these promotions, and it, it's just been the same inconsistencies. You know what I'm saying? The same inconsistencies with this guy. <laughs> Funk Master, you're a little late to the party here, but yeah, costed Shane a beer, costed Funk Master some yeah. money. Oh, that's a shame. Sorry, right buddy. There. That's crazy, but yeah, man, it was it was pretty fucked up that um that that Gary Copeland unfortunately just he just doesn't know what he's doing and he's been given more than enough times to get it right, but yeah, it's about time to give him the boot. All right, let's let go through some of the key moments from that card, starting with the Jacob Malkoon goes full Khalil Roundtree, which oh oh my god, Chef's kiss swoon, god. Damn it. That was amazing. I love the soccer kicks. Now they can't do them to the face in UFC because pussified rules, fake MMA, absolute trash. But at least he <laughs> kicked them in the body there. And that was beautiful for everyone who was saying that, um, that it was cap or that it was the chin that hit the hip. It was actually his head. That's right. Look at this, man. Look at this. Petrovsky head first into the hips of Jacob Malkoon. God Crazy, damn. Man. Crazy. That's like a third port of the world right there. Right? So it. that that honestly came across my timeline while we were prepping the show. But I might have uh, that, fucked, what fucked him up. It wasn't it wasn't that. chin to the hip. It was straight up dome to the freaking hip. Full on, man. And the worst part is that thing's gonna need some stables to shut that motherfucker. That's like a fourth, fifth port of the another dimension of hell right there. Oh, absolutely. Uh next piece of uh, fuckery i mean topic here uh kyle nelson look my canadian brother i'm happy for him was he getting the better of bill algio absolutely yep. was it an early stoppage absolutely now yeah. i I'm, I'm not opposed to standing uh tkos i've right. look we cover one championship bro we've seen them in both muay thai kickboxing i'm lumping those together and mixed martial arts okay right but this one was two punches three punches too early I don't know. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I am a person that believes in. I, I I don't believe late stoppages are a thing. I just I just chalk that up to the game right there. That means we at least know for sure you got your ass whoop. Early stoppages I absolutely hate because it just leaves too many questions on the table. In this case, uh, it, it is a rare occurrence of an early stoppage, but we kind of knew what was going to happen. I just wish the referee would have allowed it to happen. I get why not, but. Again, I would rather see some. I would rather see a body. That way, I know for sure that you got your ass kicked, and know for sure who the better person was. So, I would have loved it to go on a little longer. But am I gonna throw a fit about that? New. No. 
Yeah. So this one for me, I, and I've said this for, and usually this, uh, you guys can call it a cop out or not, but it's like this one wasn't a good stoppage and it wasn't a horrendous, you know, it wasn't a, a great stoppage. So it wasn't, a, sorry, it wasn't a bad stoppage and it wasn't a great stoppage. Like it was, it landed somewhere there in the middle where it's just like, ah, it wasn't so early where like the fighter was like protesting like crazy. Like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like, I'm still here. Like Algeo was definitely wobbled. And he, this might be one of those cases where, too tough for his own good, right? Too tough for his own good, has a pretty good chin and just wasn't going to go out from the punches that Kyle Nelson threw. Um, shout out to Kyle Nelson, though, because I do think he probably would have snuck out the win, even if it went the distance, just because he was getting the better Bill Alger. He had his timing, and he had like he literally had a kid like a week ago or two weeks ago. So like he's got that new dad strength. He needed that money. He needed that money for the household. And uh, I didn't pick him to win. I, I I thought Bill Algio's footwork would be too elusive for him. I like right. Kyle Nelson, but he's very much basic. And I don't mean that with any disrespect. He's he's good. He's not great, right? And he's good everywhere. He's just not great anywhere. Um, right. Very much like a outside the top 15 guy. And he's kind of always probably going to be a staple there. But uh, I was happy to see him get the win. I was kind of like, yeah. What wasn't the best wasn't wasn't the worst stoppage. Yeah, that's what I feel about it. Like I said, it is what it is because he definitely got his ass whooped. I would have just liked to see the lights be put out there. Now, in a similar vein, someone who was getting their ass kicked, who was eating uppercuts like like oh, boy. left, right, and center, Cedric Dumas against uh Ruzi Boyev here. Now blatant, blatant eye poke, right? He did the right. face wash, he did the John Jones. And it, and it clipped him right in the eye. Uh, Dumas delayed reaction to as he was like, he was moving forward, right? It was a step back, kind of face wash, gauging, gauging the distance. But with them UFC gloves, your hands are wide open. And uh, and though Ruzi boy, I've, I just punched him in the eye. No, you didn't punch him in the eye. You fucking poked him in the eye. Let's be perfectly honest. Uh, Cedric Dumas, a little bit of a late reaction, kind of covered up a bit. Ref didn't see it. Ref didn't see it. And that's the narrative of this card. And Ruzi boy goes in and finishes the fight. As much as I cannot stand Cedric Dumas, and it showed here, he looked god awful in this one. Ruzi Boyev was destroyed. Yeah. The, he has the, to have that opportunity to 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 actually, you know, fight. And I wouldn't even be I wouldn't even be upset if this one was run back, even though he is going to lose the next one. I mean I the love. I mean the love child of Soldier Boy and Twenty One Savage had a rough night here. Unfortunately, you know, you get poked right in the fucking eye. Ref, don't even look at it. And don't even get sympathy after the fact. Yeah, that sucks for him. Unfortunately, though, uh, it's hard to get sympathy from uh, from from a fan base that doesn't really like when uh, women get beat up by MMA fighters. So that ain't gonna help the cause. But I will say this: uh, Was that fucked up? Yes, it was. He got poked right in the eye. Referee didn't even look at it. And unfortunately, the bastard child of Soldier Boy and Twenty One Savage, unfortunately, has an L that he has to hold. Jill, you gotta uh, tell what you see in him his timing was slow his timing was off he barely landed a punch and refused to go for a takedown he's not awful, dude he's awful not to mention he looks like a soundcloud rapper so you throw all that in together he's not exactly going to be marketable to anybody that watches the sport but nonetheless um yeah I want, like i'm saying Rough run it back him, give him the fair chance to to, yeah. to get a win i'm I, there's no way I'm I'm putting my chips in in his basket, just like in the just like I said, Ruzi Boyev was going to piece him up. Ruzi Boyev was piecing him up. Do do I think him making an excuse? Oh, I punched him in the eye. Was an eye poke? No, that's bullshit. You poked him in the eye. Stop gauging distance like this, <clears throat> Chris Weidman. But uh, you know, so I'm I'm 100 down to give him the opportunity to get the fight back. He's not going to win, dude. He's not good. I'm sorry. He's not. He just isn't. And Ruza Boyev is good. Ruza Boyev has the experience. Ruza Boyev right off the bat got his timing and distance and was piecing him. The f he was piecing him up so much he was getting too comfortable with the uppercut. And Dumas couldn't even recognize that to land a hook. Like, I'm sorry, dude. It just I'm calling it how I see it, Jail. You got to tell me what you see in him, bro. I will say he is good enough to beat up, I would say, like your local bartender or bus boy uh, at one of those little armory shows. Uh, that you usually fight on your way up. So he's got talent in that department, and he's certainly good enough to beat up women. So you know what? He, he's got a future, at least in those two avenues. But in terms of further UFC development, I don't know about that. But you know what? There are always a local bar that could use a nice scrapper like him to entertain whatever drunks decide to walk by or stop by. So he's yeah. got a, he's got a future in that, at least. Yeah, and Ruzi Boyev, I'll, I'll, and I'll be critical of him as well here. 
just to appease JL a little bit. Um, <laughs> love you, buddy. <laughs> no, but the, the, his antics after the fight, especially when you like, I poked him and then ended it. Like, be a little bit more respectful is the wrong word, but just be a little bit more humble. Be a little bit more aware of the situation. I think. I'm not gonna lie; it doesn't surprise me that he he kind of went with that mentality because it seems like in MMA. Uh, a lot of it's very rare to see somebody be like, "Yeah, that was bullshit. We should run it back." A lot of fighters seem content with 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 whatever victory they get, however they can get it. So I'm kind of not surprised. He's, getting paid. he's getting paid to win, so he's he's pumped with the purse. Hell he's yeah. pumped Shit. with the purse. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of eye pokes, man. Speaking of eye pokes, first round, kind of a boring round towards the end of it with Chris Weidman, kind of just pinning Bruno Silva up against cage. Couldn't drag him off the cage, so he kind of just elected just to c- continue to knee his leg. Which again, score points, win the round. I thought Chris actually looked really good out of the gates overall. But then the second and third round happened, Jay. And I'll hand this one over to you. Uh, Talk us through this and also your opinion on this. And then I have a quote from Chris Weidman uh, in his post-fight press conference, which, you know, I I, I kind of agree with what he's saying. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, I'm on both sides of the fence. But uh, talk us through the second and third round. Oh, that's still my boy, as a wise man once said. Uh, And you know why he's still my boy? Because I knew, oh boy, Weidman reacting to this is is classic Weidman. My man is is of the mindset of, I can still win. I can still be a champion. I can still be one of the best in the world. I know he was trying to talk up, okay, maybe this will be my last. But I, I knew deep down he never believed that. And what I saw here, what I saw in this fight right here, is somebody who not only owned up to it in his own way, but he pretty much said, hey, a win's a win. And you know what? I'm going to take that win, and I'm going to use it to continue to move forward. Unfortunately, this is going to give him uh, the wrong mindset. It's going to give him the mindset of a win's a win. I'll take it. I still got something, and I can still hang with these guys. Unfortunately, he cannot, and he's going to learn that rather soon. Uh, but he he accepted this one in the most Chris Weidman fashion ever. A beautiful double eye poke TKO, something I've never seen before. So I have to give him credit for doing something that uh, has not really been done, at least in that in that uh, fashion. Uh, but I got to say though, the aftermath to this is is total Chris Weidman. And if anything, Chris Weidman's career is going to be that of you can never miss this guy fight because something weird's always going to happen. Always going to be a foul. Or maybe he breaks his leg, or maybe his opponent does something stupid and they end up getting slept. Uh, even when he loses, uh, the man is must watch <laughs> for because you know some fuckery gonna take place. So this, I would say, this is just as Chris Weidman of a fight of, as I've ever seen from beginning to end. Yeah, and I mean, again, uh, let me read this quote here from him uh, post in his post fight press conference, and I think he said this post fight on the mic as well. Um, I personally think it just should have been a no contest at right. the end of the day. That's where, that's where I lean to the most, but I do kind of understand Chris Weidman's point here where he says, I'll never question a guy who says he's been eye poked, but you can't just drop every time and keyword every time. So he didn't just drop once at the end there. He dropped two times before as well. You feel something touching your eyeball. Uh, he Silva poked me in the eye bad one time and I stood there and took it unless the ref's going to say something I don't drop. So it's like, I, I understand that argument. I really do. Cause it's fighting. You're not, right. th- it's the ref's responsibility to notice these things, but it was so egregious that like we saw it so many times. And that third one, especially where I, he, he wasn't dropped. It was, it was clear as day that like grab the eye and go down and the ref totally missed it. I don't blame Chris Weidman for jumping on it and, and, you know, finishing the fight there. Absolutely not. That's what you do as a fighter. It's right. just unfortunate that, uh, that Chris Weidman coming back and getting a win is in this fashion. Now I do agree with the, with the live chat here and, and most of the live chat here, I, like Weidman was winning the fight. Like yes, he was right. winning the fight. Um, and that's why they went to him getting the decision, right? Because instead yeah, of the no sense. contest, they, they yeah, stopped it, it there. Whoever was up on the scorecards was was going to win it. So he didn't win uh, by TKO. He won via decision. Yeah. Um, Bruno Silva overall just didn't look good, though. I, I thought he was going to be a little bit more aggressive, and he was he almost was a little trigger hungry. Well, or, sorry, you know, uh, trigger trigger scared. Whatever the you know when this fight is. when this fight was made, I said one of two things are going to happen: either Weidman is going to do something uh, to show us all that he's finished. Or he's going to use this as uh, 
a very delusional stepping stone, meaning he's going to believe that he still got it, even though he does not. Uh, so in a fight like this, didn't really surprise me that he was beating Bruno before that that uh, that that I poke TKO arrived. But yeah, Bruno is the guy that usually you match up against someone when you want them to be built up. So right. I think he served his purpose. Yeah, and, and he didn't retire. He didn't retire. Very I true. thought win or lose, he was going to retire, but uh, I guess in uh, oh no, they're gonna they're gonna fire his ass. He ain't gonna retire. I mean, <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, you meant Wyman, my fault. Um, yeah, Wyman, no, he he's gonna it's it's gonna be like be it's gonna be like uh, oh what's his name uh, Tony Ferguson. They're gonna try to feed him from here on in. They're gonna feed him difficult matchups to basically beat a retirement out of him, or at least try to. Um. All right, let's quickly talk about Nate the Train Man. What? <laughs> What just, what a walking ball of violence, right? Because because even when he gets knocked down, and it's not like he had, he's chinny because he 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 gets knocked down in his fights, but he doesn't get like cleanly knocked out, right? Right. I did. I honestly knew this one was going to be violent, but I thought Jamal Emmers was going to be able to piece him up from the outside. I thought Jamal Emmers was going to be able to yeah basically just win the range battle and win a smarter fight, quote unquote. Nate Landwehr looked incredible, man. And he's got some power in those mitts. That beautiful shot that landed perfectly on the chin of Emmers. You saw he was out as soon as that punch landed. Eyes rolled back, fell to the ground. few shots for good measure. And, uh, I mean, Nate Landwehr took some damage in that one. Took some damage in that one. I saw him on Hawani here today. And, you know, he's got the stitches on the forehead. I think the left side of his face, the right side of his face is bruised as well. Um, what a fun fighter, man. What a fun fighter. Like the UFC just can never put this guy in the apex. They 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 have to put him in front of crowds and they gotta they gotta keep him fighting in the US of A. Because it doesn't matter where he is, down south, up north, east, west, they support the train. Choo choo motherfuckers. I'll tell you what. Certainly a guy that uh, has been serviceable since his time in M1, which still blows my mind that he was willing to go over there and fight whatever Russian or foreigner they threw at him. I kind of knew since then he was a dog. Uh, but one thing about him that's always fun is he's at least consistent when it comes to being uh, a fun fighter, win, lose, draw. Uh, he's certainly a guy that you need to put in front of a crowd because really an apex fight is a fucking waste. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a guy that you can put in the – if you put him in front of a crowd, you either make him first so the crowd is warmed up and they're hype. Or you put him like at a point, like at a, after a bathroom break fight, you know what I mean? After 15 minutes where everybody's refilling their beers and shit, you put him in there, he knocks somebody out, and the crowd is is right back awake again. He's he, he's a, he's a party starter, and that's what you need on every card. You need a party starter. He's a fan favorite too. Yes. Win or lose, everyone's exactly. going to support Nate the Train. Win exactly. Or lose, everyone's fan gonna support fan Nate the train. favorite party starter. When people see Nate the Train on the lineup, they're like, okay, I can't miss that fight. You know what I'm saying? So. He, he, he has a spot. He has a spot. All right. Co-main event here. Co-main event here. And I have a lot to say about this. I have a lot to say about this. And, uh, oh, boy. There's a little April Fool's festivity also um, also involved in this uh, well, in this next breakdown. So so let's just dive into the, the first thing here. Okay, let's yeah. just dive into the first thing here. Vicente Luque is a shadow of his former self. And I'm not making excuses. That solidified it. That solidified it. And... Great win by Buckley, other than the fucking cage grab. I wish you weren't dead to me, Buckley, but now you are because you grabbed the cha cage, you cheating fuck. Anyways, calm down. Calm down. Um, Luke, I mean, overall, Buckley, way quicker. Amazing combos. So loose. So loose that he went to a freaking pool party before the fight. Bro. See, that's, I'm fighting a guy with a brain bleed dance. That's what that is. I'm fighting a dude with a brain bleed. I'm about to, I'm about to fucking score this shit. He knew before then. He knew it. He said he knew at the at the ceremonial weigh-ins when he looked Luke in the eye. He said, "This guy does not want to be here. This guy he does said, not want to be here." That's a that's a man with a brain bleed who is showing up for a paycheck. And and here's what's fucked up about it. Uh, we talked about it before the fight, and I'm like, you know, I'm worried about that dude because I don't know how you could continue to fight on with a brain bleed. And well, in his last fight, saw... he didn't get hit, right? He he right. grappled Rafael Dos Anjos. He didn't get yes. hit much. He's just so much slower than the Luke I remember. And again, I'm not trying to take anything away from Buckley. Buckley looked awesome, and his speed was great. Like, 
I, I was very, again, other than the fucking cage grab, I was very, right. very impressed. But it's like Luke was swinging at air. Other than the leg kicks and the body kicks, which that's where Luke was actually finding some success. It was just like, for those who watch Luke's rise, early right. Black Zillions to, to his UFC rise, this guy was like, this guy was such a violent fighter. Whereas now it was just like, man, he... I don't know if he wanted a way out, but he didn't want to get hit anymore. Pulls guard and just didn't do anything. Just covered up until the ref ended it. And that wasn't the Luke that I remembered watching. And you know why that's not a Luke you remember watching? Because the Luke you remember watching didn't have a brain bleed. Yeah. What we saw was a guy who said, listen, I, I still need the money. I don't really want to do this. But at the same time, I'm going to soldier up. I'm going to warrior up. But as soon as I get hit in the head too much, I'm done. And that's exactly what the fuck happened. I think he reached a point where he knew he could not take anymore. And he decided to just accept his fate. Uh, now, I said this last week. Once you get a brain bleed, you're not the same. Nick, see Nick Blackwell. Google Gerald McClellan. All you have to do are look at two names like that and know that shit. You, no reason to fight on with a brain bleed. No reason whatsoever. At that point, you're done. And the fact that he decided to continue on, unfortunately, uh, means that he knew what his fate was going to be when he signed up for the shit. And stop uh, it, I feel stop it, stop it. We <laughs> oh, don't want to see God. that, bro. No, this is like some Listen, Diego Sanchez shouldn't be kissing. We you, didn't want to see that either. If you if you want him to go out the way Justin Thornton went out in BKFC, where Feldman had a funeral for the dude and then held a card two days later on some real shit, then yeah, that's gonna be the modern version of it if you book him. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm God. down for this though, Pulse. I love what you're cooking here. Buck Lever's Jeff Neal to see where he's really at. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I would love that, that. I'm because Jeff that. Neal's good, but I don't think Jeff Neal's ever going to be a title contender. But if Buckley can get by Jeff Neal, okay, okay, you pass the next test. Right, you pass the next test. Hell yeah! And, I like that. I like that. I, I um, like it a lot. Okay, as, so as, oh, for ahead, Luke K, as for Luke Gay, there's only one fight in his future, and that is. Uh, that is that is the the spots on his brain taking over everything, taking over the thoughts, uh, as well as the demons that are going to be popping up in his head throughout this process. So that man should never fight again. And if he does, folks, uh, hold your breath or change the channel because it's going to be ugly if that man fights again. I'm just letting you know right now. I only want to see him on Fury Pro Grappling. To be perfectly or or a fight pass invitational. You know like what? If he wants to good. continue to grapple, man, I will support Luke a till the end of time. He but can, like I do not want to see him fight anymore. He can do what that one Bellator guy did. I think his name was Harfi. It was either Harfiel Carvalho or somebody else. Some one of those dudes had like a brain tumor. And then after it was removed, he said, You know what? I'm just gonna grapple from now on. I can't think of his fucking name. But you know what? Luke a should look into some shit like that. Because anything that involves getting hit in the head, no, he's done with that. He's far. He's good as done. Um. So a lot of people on MMA Twitter, a lot of I don't want to say media, but the commenters on these media oh, articles boy. in regards to this fighter saying that you know this one was rigged. Vicente Luque, he threw the fight. He wanted to make even more cash on this one. Got someone to you know bet on Buckley, and he gave him that cash over there so that he could make even more money from this fight. Now. I, Call me naive. I, I don't believe that shit. And by the way, and by the way, thank you, Skate. It's Rafael Lovato Jr. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, thank you, buddy. Thank you. That was the um, yeah. That was the dude who said, "All right, yeah, my brain's fucked. I can't do this no more." That's where Luke is at now. But, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, continue. So, my fault. on the other hand, and again, I'm going to preface this with saying, April Fool's joke or not, it's almost too ironic with James Krause coming back into the news here, speaking about. His debt on Facebook. Um, James Lynch made a great video covering this just the other day on his channel. And I'll read the Facebook po post in a moment here. And the Facebook post didn't come out on April Fool's. Okay. It came out a couple of days ago. So some people were saying, oh, the James Krause post was April Fool's. I, I don't believe that. Now, Buckley today posting a video could be, you know, jokes. But because of what James Krause posted on Facebook the other day, because of everything surrounding James Krause and the whole. In investigation um, and just his legal trouble in regards to the world of gambling. I just think that this was just not the smartest move. And if there's any form of truth to it, 
you don't go to social media with this shit. You go right to the UFC. Check it out, guys. Right. Uh, obviously, you guys know that I had one of the biggest fights of my career uh, this weekend in Atlantic City. A beautiful win. Uh, but it's just it's something that I saw and something that I heard that I feel like I got to confess to the world. Uh, so here it is. Um, after my fight uh, with Vicente Luque and me getting my hand raised, you know, we got done and got cleared for medicals. Uh, I got checked up on, uh, everything was fine, nothing was wrong with me. Uh, so after I got done and I got cleared, I seen Vicente and I seen him walk towards this room. And in this room, I saw James Krause. I couldn't hear the initial conversation. But I seen James Krause hand Vicente Luque a ticket. <laughs> and when he handed it to him, I could slightly hear him whisper in his ear. He did a good job. I don't know you what that did means. a good job. You hear that? He said, whisper in his ear, you did a good what? job. I don't know what that ticket was. But uh, it's really been messing with me, y'all. So that's my confession, bro. <laughs> So again, April, April, I'm going to say this right now, April Fool's joke or not, that's risky business given everything that's still going on, ongoing investigation. And this was a great tweet by uh, Ludus Sharta. Guys, go check him out at Ludus Sharta. <laughs> I'm, kill I'm killing friggin' uh, Jay Smooth over here, guys. Oh, oh my God. Well, a great tweet by Ludus Sharta. <laughs> Again, guys, go check him out on Twitter. He says, how was James Krause even allowed in the building? And this is, he prefaced it with saying, you know, if this is real, oh. if this wasn't an April Fool's joke, hey, how was Krause even allowed in the building? Oh. Did his investigation get cleared because I believe he was facing federal charges? Uh, noted live Luke did looked off and pulled guard in the second round to cover up. There's never coincidences, only cover ups. Now, here's what James Krause posted on Facebook oh, just the other day I am in over five million dollars of debt and don't lose a second of sleepover because stop of this. Right there. Few stop things. right there. Oh, no, hold on. Easy. Stop oh. right there after that first sentence. Say that first sentence again. I'm in line. over five million dollars of debt and don't lose a second of sleep. Over. Let's let's make sure for the record, he is already bullshitting everybody by saying that. If 100%. you were, I don't care who you are, how much money you got. If you are five million dollars in debt, your ass is not sleeping at all. So let's just go ahead and start right there. He is already lying to everybody. Now let's continue, please. Because of this, I've learned a few things along the way. Inflation. Mm -hmm. If you do nothing with your money, you are losing it due to the dollar not being worth what it once was even a year ago. Two, cash flow. All my properties have month uh, have money left over after all bills are paid monthly. Three, leverage. Because I have equity in my properties, I'm able to leverage that equity to create lines of credit or more cash to buy more properties. How the oh fuck is this guy getting God. credit if he's involved in a federal lawsuit? Um, this, once sounds I learned, like, this sounds like DJ Envy all over again. Oh my God, dude. Once oh I God. learned how debt worked, it changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> if they keep printing money, then why wouldn't you use debt? If the people running the country are using debt, the largest companies in the world are using debt, then why wouldn't you? <laughs> Lastly, once you understand fractional banking and how it works, you know that most of this is just numbers on a computer screen anyways. But that's for another post. One of the many topics to discuss. Wait, wait for it. In my real estate coaching group. If I can help you in any way, shoot me a DM. Now, I have a follow-up on this as I saw a tweet earlier today and I screenshot it here. Right now, um, Kraus oh is God. launching a group. Um, there's actually a member who's posting about it on Facebook and Twitter, and he's saying he's going to lower the price to $250 a month if you guys want to join this real estate, quote-unquote, coaching group oh boy now james lynch did a way better job of doing a deep dive into this video so i will post the link here in the live oh, chat boy. but i mean what is this the the one percent club 2.0 is man, he an expert in real estate 
My man I mean, thinks he's Bernie Madoff. <laughs> how do I mean? How do his freaking charges affect his ability to get licensed? Was he licensed before? Oh. I mean, th- there's just so many questions to this. And I mean, oh and, and what about what about loans? How is he getting lines of credit if he's still under federal investigation? Right. How, like, where is the money coming from? Who are you working with? And why are you even doing this? Now, the mm-hmm. fact that the, the the first line alone tells me everything. My man is five million dollars in debt. Right. That tells me not only is he desperate, uh, when you're $5 million in the hole, that means you really fucked up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to imagine that is a lot of legal shit. He probably had to keep a lawyer on retainer, probably has to, probably had to hide a lot of that shit too. Because when the feds are sniffing down your door and you got some fucking money that, uh, let's just say, you didn't wash clean, yeah, you're probably going to try to hide it out somewhere. So I imagine... A good amount of that, the feds probably seized, didn't tell anybody about it, probably. Uh, so that's probably a mixture of bills, and I'm pretty sure the feds probably see some of that as well. Because, uh, again, we're talking about it literally throwing fights. That means once the Bro, feds I thought he was in you, jail. I, I thought he was in jail. That's why, that's why I literally thought we hadn't heard from him, because he was right. fucking sitting in a cell right now awaiting trial. You know what this tells me? This tells me either the shit hasn't really hit the fan with him yet. They're still trying to find some shit. Or, or he's already he struck already, a deal and has fucking um, already snitched yes. on some others people he was working on. I was about to say he's a rat. I was just about yeah, to say he's, he already, a, he's a rat. rat. <laughs> he's a he's a rat for the bag. My man was in so much debt over his head. He had Bro, a rat and he didn't want to I, say anything. I should have teed up that clip from The Departed. You smell that? <laughs> you smell a rat. One of the best movies of all time, man. Um, so MMA Fighting had a quote that said, uh, there's no oh. word as to when the investigation into the betting uh, irregalities may come to a close, but Krauss will not be allowed to participate in anything combat sports related while he remains under suspicion from the Nevada Hell Commission. Yeah. He could also potentially face financial or criminal penalties as a result of, bet- of the betting scandal, obviously. Dude, but hey, that look, begs the question yeah. of like, Buckley's video is probably capped because there's no way the UFC would let him in the door. There's, there's Atlantic that, right. City or not, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was about to say, as soon as he said that he saw James Krause there. I said, okay, he's definitely bullshitting because if Krause was there in Atlantic city at a UFC event, he's not making it out of there unless he's in handcuffs. You know what I mean? <laughs> Somebody going to rat if they see that man walking backstage. So I said, there ain't no way in hell. He trolling like a motherfucker. Oh, I love that it. Shit, okay. Up. We'll, we'll no quickly fun. go over this one. Cause we've gone a little long in the UFC oh, stuff, but there is, there was just a lot to unpack he, he, for he such a shitty one. card. There was yes. a lot to unpack there. I do want to say this. This is the first time when myself and everybody watching demanded that I give these ladies five minutes to entertain us. And if not, we shut it down and we come back for Sunday boxing. It was the first time and hopefully the only time I've ever done that in a main event of any fight card I've ever done in my life. We sat there and we gave these ladies five minutes. And then, you know what happened for the literally the next four rounds, what they did in the first Holy shit, this was bad. And this was not only bad, it was advertised as a main event. So going in, people knew it was going to be bad. I love that. But here's what I will say, though. To the people that walked out of the venue, I understand why you did it. But you kind of did it to yourself. You knew going in that this was the main event. So if you, you paid, paid money, for this event yeah, so knowing this was the headline. There, if you paid to be there and you lived out early, you're a dumbass. You have no right to complain. However, the people that were smart enough to not pay money for that card, uh, you do have a right to complain. Now, I will say this. This fight, of course, did not – it 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 pretty much played out the way I kind of thought it would. The only difference is I maybe uh, – the, the one thing I will say I learned is that Blanchfield has the sh- one of the shittiest corners, I think, oh, in all of them. Thank you. Oh, thank my you for God. Pointing that out. Why oh was my he God! The last double and double. single legs in open water all Thank day. You. Every day. The fact he's like, Thank "Oh no, you. just keep pressuring. You're gonna finish her." Bro, what are you fucking talking about? Oh. What are you fucking talking about? She Bro. threw three takedowns. I want. I, honestly, somebody should have thrown a beer can at the back of that guy's fucking head. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I said, "You're really gonna give her that advice when she's clearly getting her ass kicked in the stand up." It wasn't. It wasn't the most violent shit in the world, obviously, but still, she's clear. It's clearly not working. You need to blast double. Make this a grappling fair, and she failed to do that. And I blame. I part. I more so blame the corner because they gave her shitty advice. That guy needs his ass kicked. Not a good coach. 
So I'll push back a little bit here because, you know, and come at me, guys. I'm I'm not a women's MMA hater. I'm a women's MMA hater in the goddamn UFC, okay? That's so fair. I, no, I, no, I no truly, that's fair. That's fair. I truly don't understand the hate. That's fair. I, I saw in the live chat here it was a technical striking match. It was technical for man. No, I don't think there was much technique there from Aaron. <laughs> um, I really don't get the hate. I, I really don't. And this is a little tongue in cheek, but if Carla and Rose is the new bar for a women's title fight, then this one blew our expectations out of the water. <laughs> yeah, tongue a little planted in cheek there. But furthermore, MMA fans <laughs> acting like they were disappoint disappointed with a stand up fight. Look, it wasn't the best fight. I'm not here saying, oh, this was awesome. I'm not defending that. But you all think, you, put it this way, you guys would be complaining if this was just a, a wrestle fuck for five rounds from Aaron Blanchfield. You'd be complaining even more. At least we saw some actual fighting in this one. Here's the, okay? but, but, but here's Everyone the, here's rips the on wrestling problem. and grappling every week. Here's the real problem. The people that need to be blamed for this are the matchmakers. The real question is, if you knew this matchup was going to be dog shit, why would you put this as a main event? I don't blame the women at all because listen, the w women's MMA is women's MMA. You're gonna have your your big ones with the title. The title fights are always gonna be better than some of the. Uh, some you of got the Valentina fights. and Wei Li and, and the other Chinese chick. That's exactly, it. exactly, That's it. exactly. So this, I blame the UFC for this shit. I said y'all knew Rest these two were gonna be boring as hell. Why would why do you put them there? So I blame matchmakers for this lazy ass decision right here more than anybody else. I don't even blame these two because they fought exactly how I thought they fight. Yeah, it's just like th this ungodly expectation that this was going to be like the best fight of the night. Like, yeah, it shouldn't have been the main event. I agree right. with you. But like people right. are like, oh my, just going crazy, like freaking rioting on Twitter. Like, are you kidding me? Like you yeah. really thought this was going to be better. Lower your fucking expectations, guys. Honestly. Hey, look, like, they should have done what a lot of people set them yeah. accordingly. Right, you need to listen. It should have been a mass boycott of the main event. Don't even talk about it. At that point, show yourself shutting the TV off or changing the channel. You want to send a message. You can't just say, "Oh my God, that was a boring fight round," because then that means you watched it, which gives them even more of a reason to book more of it. Which yeah, is and what did we all say? Bad. If Manon defends the takedowns, mind you, Aaron Blanchard didn't throw many. She right. was going to piece her up, and that's exactly what she did. So I'm not going to hate on this woman for winning the fight, following a good game plan, and being gifted, you know, oh, an easier path because her opponent was, quite frankly, not fighting very smart. And that's, again, because of her corner, I think, at the end of the day. Last thing I want to say before we move on, and we're going to go over this show probably another 10 minutes because we have a few more things to talk about, but right. um, cut this goddamn bloody butt bitch from the UFC. Listen, Cut her. She bro. did not deserve her spot after Contender Series, and I'm I'm sick of it. I had Melissa, Melissa Gato winning. I dropped a little money on her, and I'm fucking... And I never bet on women's MMA. <laughs> I am never betting on women's MMA again. Fuck Victoria Dudikova. Listen. This bloody butt bitch. I hope they fucking cut her. Real shit. Not only do they need to cut her, they need to like uh they they need to like put her in like some sort of laboratory because it seems like not only is she like a human disease carrier, uh this woman has some of the worst hygiene imaginable, apparently. Terrible hygiene, doesn't Ooh. wash enough, and now she's sick again before walkout. We need to incubate this bitch in some sort of laboratory and we need to rid of all the diseases she has. She's a walking hazard. If nah, she bro, sneezes in your direction, listen, you get, bro, she will give you syphilis by sneezing on you. Like she's at, she's at that level of dirty at this point. They need to get rid of her and fucking give her a bath or something. Good bro, God. I, I like, there might've been like a little bit of a try. Like, okay, I understand why the UFC signed this blonger. Now I just look at her and. Bleh. <laughs> like, oh my god, dude! I'm so done with that shit. Cut her. Uh, she doesn't. Yeah, they need to get rid of her. George Hardwick fights in a close fight, and you don't give him a contract, yeah. and now he's rotten in Cage Warriors still, and you don't. And you give this chick a contract, it blows my fucking mind, dude. It blows it. It blows Absolutely my mind. Blows it. Okay. Anyways, last quick thing on the UFC before we talk, uh, we go through some pancreas highlights and a quick. I shouldn't even say quick. An epic hockey fight. Jack Della Maddalena also had staff going into his fight at UFC 299. That was revealed yesterday uh, from an article um, on MMA fighting. He said, I had staff just heading into the fight just before we left. I was on antibiotics. I think it was like really sore the weekend before. It had gotten quite a lot better. So I was thinking the antibiotics are obviously working. It was just like 
a pimple on my knee. I just didn't really train, just chilled for most of the four or five days we were there in Miami. Now, Jack Del Maddalena's coach, Ben Vickers, added extra detail, noting that the fighter limped onto the plane before heading into the Miami Good. Before heading into Miami for the March 9th event. So he was basically saying that, like, look, it was actually a lot worse than Jack Della is you know, making it out to be. He said, let's be honest, you limped onto the plane with staff. He limped onto the plane with, an- with antibiotics right. Wednesday before the fight. We've got guys pulling out of fights two weeks out with staff. Jack was never going to pull out, but unfortunately... Uh, we lost a whole week of training. While Jack Della Maddalena was seemingly able to overcome the issue ahead of time and get that win against Gilbert Burns, obviously the same couldn't have been said for St. Denis. I'll tell you what, the same is funny because we always wonder how people get staffed, but then you see crazy decisions like Sean O'Malley not showering and then going right to the club, or that one guy that got bit in the arm and got a tattoo without even really cleaning up the bite. Fighters do a lot of weird shit, and it seems like staff just follows a lot of these motherfuckers with all that training they do all the damn time. It seems like they'd spend more time in the training room than in a bath or something. So I'm not, whenever I hear staffing fans, I'm like, oh, okay. This is that time of the year where uh, you rolled around on some dirty ass mats and you could track something. It had part of the game. Yeah. Got to chalk right. that one up to the game. Let's appease our boy Jojo, my new best friend here in the live oh, chat. Oh, Jojo. yeah, the homie, the homie. <laughs> and I say that because, and, and there might be a few of you who watched Pancrase as well, or there might have been a few of you in Dylan Chaikin's stream that night, which holy motherfucker, if you know, you know. But overall, good show of Pancrase, guys. Good show. Uh, here's some fun highlights. And I say, and I encourage you guys to, you know, if you're into Japanese MMA, if, if you're staying up all night anyways, you might as well be watching a great show. They lowered the price from $30 USD to 2,000 Japanese yen, which comes out to about $13.99 USD. Shit. Worth every penny. Worth every penny. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole card. I'm not even going to bring the whole you know topology card here, but I do have two highlights uh, teed up. Starting with the new king of Pancrase, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, Pancrase, 341 shows, man. Props to them. They've been around since before the UFC. Yeah, I was about so to just say. Just around that time. That's a lot. Of, I, was about, I was about to say, that definitely is more than the UFC. I didn't realize it was 341 by then. I knew they were around a little longer, but I didn't know it was that many. Damn. Look, a shadow of what they were back when they were like a legitimate competitor, yeah. when they were one of the oh, big ones. Oh, Boss yeah, yeah. And still able to wear boots, even though they only allowed open palm strikes at that point. Yeah, far they, beyond developed... the days of the rooting in the shamrocks. You right yeah, they, they've grown with the times, obviously. Uh, they kind of have they kind of have a hybrid superior rule set, kind of like one championship, but it's still fucking awesome. And uh, Tatsuya Saka, all right, becoming the new king of Pancrase flatlines Akira Okada with a head kick to claim the lightweight. And I love how they don't call it champion. They call it king of Pancrase, guys. Check right. this shit out. Boom! Oh, oh, damn. Dead. Oh, I thought he was right to the head. Yeah, actually so got his ass with that. God damn. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable Jeez. win here. The Coleman and Maine absolutely delivered on this card, guys. Absolutely delivered. Kind of embarrassing that he got knocked out by a guy that fell on his ass, but that's still brutal though, the way he fell. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. the fucking ground probably did more damage. And on it's the so women's side though. of things, uh, Sarami knocks out Sayako Fujita in 48 seconds to become the Adam Weight Queen of Pancrase. Oh, shit. And we'll show the highlight here, and then I'll quickly talk about how Adam Weight should be in the UFC, let's be perfectly honest. Yes, I agree with that. Oh! Oh, oh, god damn. Dude, we'll we're, we're watch it again. We'll watch it again. Because if you blink, you might miss it. Boom! Oh, oh, loads up that right hand. Fuck, that was beautiful. God damn. <laughs> Seeing the Tweety Birds. Oh. Seeing the Tweety Birds. Jesus. Your fucking head ringing. And uh, yeah, dude, there's a few girls from Deep Jewels, which Deep Jewels, an awesome, awesome promotion. The the that's women's side one. of Deep. Yeah, that's a good one. Usually Deep Jewels has good. Th- there was some girl we saw get starched in that one. What's going on, Dubois? But yeah, Joe man. There was a they need to come back to Fight Pass. That is true, buddy. That is yeah, true. Yeah, they do. They need to be back on Fight Pass. It was much easier to watch that one. So last but not least, and I know you guys in live chat, you, you're on our side here. WMMA in the UFC. Leaves a lot more to be desired. But to everyone hating on women's MMA in general, you got to be specific on your hate. 
say that it's UFC women's MMA, say it's you know, true. North American regional MMA, say it's any weight outside of Adam weight, because deep Pancras, KSW, I mean, these fucking queens are carrying the flag for women's MMA, for I mean, women's even, fighters even, internationally. Even, yeah, even like one Everyone's bitching and complaining. Yeah. Quite frankly, they're lazy and they're acting like polybians. I'm well, not convinced it, anybody's an is, MMA uh, fan. Just a Dana White simp if they're going to yeah, continue was, to say that women's just, MMA is bad. It's simple as that. I was just that. about to say, their representation, unfortunately, means the UFC women. So it's like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Be that's, specific, that's man. Because yeah. they just, like... Like we highlighted one here, like we highlighted the Deep Jewels chicks last week, like we highlight those warriors who go to fucking town in KSW. I'm going to fucking sing their praises, and you guys can rip me on that all you want, but they're, they're incredible fighters, and they put on good shows. They're knocking bitches out. How, how can you not love that? How can you not love that? Oh, definitely. Someone's I mean, going to yeah. clip that with the out of context <laughs> now, by the way, and I'm going to get canceled, but... <laughs> Uh, even, hell, even one championship has good uh, women's MMA fighters. Yeah. Zhong is unreal. That Chinese chick, the panda, dude, she is nothing but violence. She refuses to yeah. go to the ground because she just wants to. She just wants to box. She just want to utilize elbows. Stamp, right? Muay Thai, oh, kickboxing, yeah. and MMA champion. Stamp. I'm, stamp I'm glad and you Angela said that before that. And Angela oh, Lee God. before that. Right. It's a shame what Chachar did to that family, by the way. It's not talked about enough, but oh boy, oh boy, I wish he didn't fuck with that family the way he did. Yeah, I just I really want to see UFC have Adam Wicks. I want to see a lot of these Asian fighters come over and oh, test yeah. themselves in North America. I think that would be fucking Absolutely. awesome. Fucking Victoria Lee would have been a, a goddamn superstar had it not been for Chatri. That motherfucker. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yes. Rest in peace. That shit. tragic story. Or by the way, um uh what is it? Uh MMA Academic, I believe his name is. Correct me if I'm wrong in the live chat here, and I'll link it in the description of this video. Oh, yeah. He did, a, fucking, he um, did a really good documentary on uh on the Lee family, and it, it's a fucking tearjerker, guys. Like if if you're if you're an emotional guy, if you're an emotional gal, the end of it will you'll you'll need a tissue or two, but it's a very good watch, and I I absolutely recommend you guys watch what's up, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I'm so wasted. Cheers, buddy. On a Monday. I Let's it. freaking go. I love Longer it. That's the homie right now. I love that King J Laundry fighting championship. Yeah, I like that for a different reason. I like that for a different reason. Oh, I love um, it. All right. Uh, last thing we want to get into here, guys. We're going to skip the tough prospects here today. Uh, we'll bring that back next week as yeah, there's we'll no UFC next, week. next weekend. So we'll bring back the tough prospects. For those who haven't been following the show, Jay and I have been running down the roster, the cast of the new Ultimate Fighter coming out. And we've just been basically been highlighting one or two every week. Looking at some of their uh, knockouts, looking at some of their highlights, just so when the Ultimate Fighter does come around and we're junkies, we're going to hate watch it, all of us. The yes. show's actually, the drama's going to suck because there's going to be no drama, but the fights actually, I think, will deliver as the cast is so much better than last year's cast and their gimmick of like returnee UFC guys against prospects, which the returnee UFC guys absolutely destroyed them. And other than the Valia versus Katona fight, there wasn't really much competition, let's be perfectly honest. But we will get back on that train so we all are kind of familiar with the cast going into tough because, again, we're, we're all going to hate watch it together. I'll probably be streaming the season again. Um, but we're back to the hockey fights. Last segment of the show here, guys. Last segment of the show here. We have Donald Brashear against Mike Bajerny. This is taking or this did take place in April of 20 or April of 2005. And for those who don't know who Donald Brashear is, longtime hockey player, longtime National Hockey League player. And he's still playing professional hockey at 52 years of age, ladies and gentlemen. He had a fight three weeks ago in the mighty LNAH, which, you know that saying? I went to a, I went to, um, a fight and a hockey game broke out. That is this league. Right. This league is literally a fight-first league that used to be run and funded by the Hells Angels. Check out my podcast on the Soda Pod with our boy Fourth Line Voice, as he actually covered that league during that time. And uh, yeah, they got their funding from Pornhub. They got their funding from um, from the Hell's Angel. It was crazy. It was the Wild oh, West. Oh, I love it. Danbury Trashers vibes left, right, and center. He's still there. He is still fighting and playing hockey in the mighty LNAH. It's basically the Ryzen of hockey. Because it's 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 a fight league first. 
and he's doing okay, man. He's two goals, eight, you know, eight points in 24 games at 52 years of age, coming out of retirement. He last played a full season in 2015, 2016, and he came back this year to play in the LNAH. He also, Jay, has a topology page because the mighty Donald Brashear actually has one MMA fight in the former, I guess it's not officially oh, yeah, defunct, but he fought in TKO and trained at TriStar for that fight where he beat some fuck. Well, I guess it was ringside MMA, but it became <laughs> TKO. 21 seconds though. God damn. Bro. I mean, this guy literally came off of an amateur fight to fight. I was about Don to Brashear. say, my man, my man definitely looked like a truck driver. He, he, Bro, this, he how, like how Northern though. Canadian does this guy fucking look? That that <laughs> is the that truly is the face of a Northern Canadian. Looks like he has some fucking hockey skates to uh, decorate his skin there. God damn! <laughs> Couple pucks to the face there, eh, bud? Um, all right, Donald Brushier, two thousand five. Hell that. of a fight here. Let's take. Let's check it out. <laughs> Yo, pfft, he's tripped his ass. Okay, here we go. Fight time. Please brawl. Oh, here we go. I love the French shot. Uh... Oh. Ooh. Why is he backing up though? Come on, fight him. He's scared of Brashier, man. He's scared of Brashier. That's funny. Oh, that's funny. Oh, 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 shit. Good clinch work. Good clinch work. One of the reasons why I chose this one was to show oh, that the LNH, oh. like they don't stop the back fights. The if this was the National Hockey League, the fight would have been stopped Jesus. right now. Jesus. Now he's just going to hold him up. I love how the referee's like, fuck it, keep going, keep going. Good, don't break oh. it up at all. Let him keep hitting him in the back of the head. Oh, shit. God damn. He's giving that man a concussion. He's hit him in the back of the head at least eight times. Oh, oh. Bro, Joshua in the live chat's hating right now, bro. Joshua oh, no, in the live chat's not. hating. That's because he wants his question answered, even though it's been asked like 20 times and we already answered it. No, we answered him like three times. I don't know what he's going on about. Oh, shit. Oh, jeez. I thought he was going to throw... Wait, what does he do? Okay, just picking up some... Dude, he's taking off his arm... His uh, his elbow pads, so he has oh. more... <laughs> at, okay, at this point, the referee may be like, all right, you're pretty much... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, okay. Now... Oh, shit. That took a lot longer than it needed to, but god damn, at least he stripped him and fucking killed him there. He got him to his knees. <laughs> oh... What fucking country love is he? Wait, Look, and he's country telling, is he he's telling the bench, you guys want some of this? You want some of this? <laughs> what oh country is he God. from again? I was about to say, you said he's from Canada, right? He He's American born, but he grew up in Quebec. Oh, okay. I was about to say, because he kind of does look like he's American born, but that makes sense. Holy shit. See, yeah. that's a, see, that's better than in the States. That shit's broken up after like five seconds. At least he got his, at least he had a good amount of CTE before they jumped him. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> Oh, I know it wasn't the most action-packed, but I love how the ref just let them go until one guy clearly, quote-unquote, lost the fight, right? And right. and that's the beauty of the LNAH, even today, man. Even today. Now, they've limited the amount of fights a team can have from, like, unlimited to, I think it's, like, oh, I, th I think it's, like, six or eight now, which is still, like, an astronomical amount for yeah, the game of hockey, bad. which is, you know, yeah, fighting's part of the game. But, like, it's not the game. The, the game is put the puck in the back of the net, score, right? But the LNH, right. they know that people buy tickets to watch these absolute savages go to town and fight each other. So, Donald Brashear, 52 years of age, and he's still freaking fighting, man. What still an absolute music sticks. That would have been funny if somebody did get hit in the head with a stick. I'm surprised that hasn't happened. Oh, it's happened. Yet. It's happened. It's happened a few times <laughs> in the old school uh, NHL. Um, all right, guys, we're about to sign off uh, here in a little bit. There's just one thing that was it, – it's really close to home for me, and it's kind of near and dear to my heart. So um, I'm going to bring it up on screen now. But uh, there's a GoFundMe going on right now. And again, I don't, I don't expect anybody here – I'm not saying you have to donate or anything like that. I just want to bring it to your guys' attention. I shared it on Twitter. I shared it with uh, Jay. Um, it's just part of our – community here oh yeah team. i heard about that one yeah i heard about so, that. so a young man out of again my backyard vancouver british columbia 
right. uh, out here in Western Canada. Lee Zen Huan's family are dealing with an un- unimaginable tragedy right now. Lee is a promising young student who is earning his PhD in chemistry at the University of British Columbia. Prior to that, he was actually studying in the University of Waterloo in Ontario. On October 14th, 2023, uh, for leisure and fun, he joined a hobbyist level kickboxing tournament um, advised as light and controlled contact. It unfortunately didn't play out that way. And after multiple bouts and shortly following his final bout, his health rapidly deteriorated and he lost consciousness. He was evacuated to the hospital where he acuted a subdural hematoma and was diagnosed with a traumatic brain bleed. He lies in a vegetable, a vegetative state uh, right now at the Royal Columbian hospital. It is unclear if or when he will regain consciousness um, he's a Chinese Canadian kid and his mother flew from overseas as she's still located in China. Um, and she's been basically just sitting with him since by his bed. Uh, the family's facing significant expenses while Canadian public insurance is in place for hospital needs like this. He will soon have to be transferred to a long-term care. Um, and that, you know, like you guys know, in the United States, that shit ain't cheap. Um, additionally, his mom is hoping to bring him back home to China, even in this state, if that's the case. Right. Um, she's been quoted so far, um, cost of over a hundred thousand dollars alone. Again, what, if you guys can help amazing, if not, please just spread, spread this on Twitter. Follow me at VI sports talk. It's on the screen right now. I've been sharing it. And, um, again, this is near and dear to me just cause it, you know, it's in my backyard of Vancouver, British Columbia, a uh, Canadian kid, getting into the sport recreationally and you know it, it, it kind of hits home because i used to do point fighting when i was younger jay's done boxing and kickboxing i still do jujitsu and martial arts it's fighting at the end of the day and these things can happen so it just uh it just it just sucks to hear about these stories and i know there's probably stories like this in every neck of the woods but it, it came across my table came across my timeline want to use this platform to at least uh show our support and if there's anybody here who does want to donate um you know the, the family would be really appreciative. So just wanted to end, uh, ended the show like that. And yeah, guys, thank you for the prayers and, and, you know, good vibes as well. And if that's all you can send then then, then, then that's all we ask at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. I mean, pretty much that's all you can really do at that point, but yeah, you hate to see that happen though. And I mean, there was actually a good amount of, uh, it, it seems like in the combat sports world, it did happen more than once. Cause there was a Japanese boxer who kind of suffered similar fate. You know, you had him, uh, there were a couple other fighters I know who had like some brain injuries as well. So yeah, you, you always hit to see that happen. Yeah. Um, all right guys. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you want to talk about in the comments here, but while you get those in, let's, let's start wrapping up the show here. Jay, what do you got coming up this week and where can the fans find you? Oh, you can of course find me on rush hour fight club on my YouTube as well as Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and by the way, also, I do want to shout out somebody else's post mentioned RIP DS. Absolutely. Uh, RIP, I do want to say to uh, a good friend of ours, Drunk Savage, who was actually a supporter of my channel since I started. Like, Dude, one. yes, I saw yeah, that. Man. He was, Sorry for not bringing that up. I know he's oh, a big it's member, he was yeah. a big uh, community member of MMA Holes as well. Yeah, so like that was where I met him, and he had actually supported me um, when I had first started the channel. And he was one of the first people in my chat, funny enough, when I was a co host. Uh, with the now retired uh, Dan Davis, but yeah, man, shout, rest in peace to him and his family, man. I hope everything's good. And uh, oh man, yeah. of course, there's a good amount of yeah, there's a good amount of people watching right now that know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, but man. Uh, yeah, man, is it, that that was crazy to hear about that because I had heard it actually while I was commentating the oh. UFC card, which was like, oh shit, somebody came in and uh, dropped that. But yeah, man, shout out to him and his family as well. So yeah, a lot of prayers to a lot of people, bro. Yeah, I, I never interacted with him too much in the chat, but like I definitely I, I knew who he was. I knew oh, he, yeah, was he was super yeah, active in the MMA holes chat too. Yeah. It's funny, he's a big hardcore fan as well. So he would love he like he would love an atmosphere like this. Yeah, sure. King James, we'll be doing that next week, buddy. We'll be doing that next week. And, and Joshua, sure. I, I know you really want us to, to do a stream together. We're both gonna be covering the event. Maybe we do it yes. together. We haven't decided yet, okay? We well, haven't decided. Thing, well, the thing we can say is we're both gonna be live. <laughs> He'll be yeah. live on his channel, I'll be live on my channel. So and Josh, one of the, yeah, we'll and, be live. And, and one of the reasons why like we don't necessarily do stream and, and like we could for probably some lower level promotions, but like let's be honest. Let let let's let's pull back the curtain because we're honest with our chat here, you know. <laughs> 
We both want to make a little some some on the stream. We both want to get some views on this and dividing and conquer conquering, you know, gets the the best of both worlds, right? So I mean, it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say, I'll be honest, you know, I, I'm if Jay wants to do it, Jay, I'm down. We'll talk about it, but you know, oh, yeah. that's one of the reasons why we don't do always streams together, and we each have our own chat. We each have our own style of doing streams. Right. Um, we definitely each send each other's chat our way. We we cross promote. We, we support each other. We're doing this show together, you know, dividing and conquering, but also coming together. But for a big, big stream like that, you know, that's kind of where I believe both of our heads are at on that one, Joshua, to, to, to finally answer your question. We both will be live. Maybe, maybe down the road, we start doing some, some stuff together, but it will probably be lower promotions and more stuff where you can just, uh, oh, what's you know, just up, have listen, you could just call into my show while I'm live and there you go. No, there you go. There you, <laughs> there go. I'll get, you go. I'll, I'll be on speakerphone the whole time. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So shit, oh, there man. you go. What it answers yes, then there you go. There you uh, go. Let's uh, see who you're replacing Hill 300 April Fool's Joke. Oh, I imagine so. Yes. There's another RIP as well. RIP Rob, come on. Uh, kickboxing legend, yes, Dutch kickboxing legend, man. Oh, and he, he passed away. Yeah, he passed this week, actually. Man, like, this, this has this been week, a tough bro. weekend. Fuck. It has, man. It has. He passed away, I want to say, two, three days ago, something like that, sadly. Uh, but yeah, man, kickboxing legend, one of my favorites to watch, actually. He was always a good fighter. He was one that loved to step up and uh, and take on the competition. I'm going to miss that guy. Uh, yeah, but yeah, tough, as of what I'm doing weekend, this weekend, man, tough weekend. As of what I'm doing this weekend, folks, oh, it's simple. One Friday fights. Uh, I'm doing one fight night 21, but as you can see, I'm going to be commentating uh, the LFA 181 Guzzi Hines fight. And honestly, I might do the rest of that card because that one card is going to be a drag to the main event. Bro, uh, make sure if it pans to the yes. audience, I'm gonna be waving. I'm, I, I, oh shit! I should and bring, I should bring just like a rush hour flag. Yeah. I should be like, fucking subscribe <laughs> and watch the rush hour, motherfuckers. <laughs> oh hell, hey, look, one for Rush City, one for Rush Hour, and there one for go. City Life. There you go. And by go the way, go check wanna, out his interview. Go check yes. out his interview. He's awesome. If you, if you want to learn about Alvin Hines, the heavyweight fighting this coming Friday, I did an interview with him. And actually, Isha, I think you talked to him too, right? Yeah, I'm just about to load up uh, my Hell stuff yeah. here. As I always, you can find me yeah. at the City Life Project. Yeah. Sub um, to him, by the way, like JoJo, for example. There's his channel, JoJo. Please give him a sub because that's the hey, that yeah, you JoJo, guys you're are my kind of people, like bro. Seriously, you're following yeah. regionals more than UFC. You're my kind of people. Uh, just like Jay, we do we do watch parties. Um, we also do a little bit of everything. As I, I'm only one of the three contributors to this channel, I cover all the live stuff in regards to sports, but we also have a ton of music content as well where we film local artists live with our cinema camera we have fishing vlogs as the co-creator of the channel my partner in crime who does a lot of the editing on the back end is a huge fisherman um here's the mma and combat sports podcast last guest was liam harrison but we got alvin guzzi hines here was this was prior to his oh, yeah. uh last time in lfa and i'm hoping to touch base with him this week we had john DeBello on the show joe giannetti Ooh. as well who told a great story on his feud with Patty Pimblett. You're going to want to go check that oh, out. Yeah. Um, the channel actually bega began as a music channel as the City Life Project was me and my boy Kyle's band name when we were in a band together nice, nice. 10 years ago. So we kind of just brought it towards here. So we got some music content. My boy Tim has like 30 fucking tarantulas. So we do tarantula feedings for those who can handle. <laughs> That's a wild motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> beer and whiskey beer and whiskey reviews as i do a beer vlog and tasting every single week and, and obviously I fight reaction like videos and a, a whole lot more ladies and gentlemen we do a little bit of everything here on the city like probably there's and the beer us, reviews and also do us a favor subscribe to our new rush city podcast channel while you're at it absolutely so let me bring that up as well sub to me sub to isha and then this show that you see on mondays it's going to be on the new Rush City Pot Fight Show channel. Yes, sir. There it is right now. When we hit yeah. about 200, let's say about 200, about 200, 250, we're, we're going to start putting the episodes up over there and actually be live uh, live over there and doing the Monday show over there. So, definitely so rack up that uh, subscriber count. Use all your burners. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your aunties. Right. You know them aunties go crazy for MMA, ladies and gentlemen. So they will subscribe to that shit um i didn't want to bring that up rob i'll definitely be following i love the energy and passion on this part hey we appreciate you man we appreciate you but oh yes but don't don't sub to our friend dylan oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, well, by the way thank you them. by the way thank you kim king james you said that jd should make a good commentary team oh no doubt oh thank he you should, buddy 
Yeah, Isha, Isha's Gorilla Monsoon, and I'm Bobby Heenan. I just say shit to make people laugh. Well, Isha's the guy that keeps it on straight. He's like, Bobby, will you stop, damn it? <laughs> I don't know. I made you laugh today with the fucking James Krause thing. You I'm did. Saying, you I'm did. Saying. You did get me with that one. That was a good one. And we got a great live chat here. I, you know, this thing, once once the Rush City show goes on that new channel, both our chats will be, like, combined. They kind of are because we're, like, sharing more and more. That's um, true. you go on screen. But, like, imagine when both of these crews are combined in one fucking chat, man. It's oh, going to be mayhem. Funny. That's going to be yeah, mayhem. I don't know if everybody's ready for that. Well, we are, but I don't know if everybody else is ready for it. But they better get ready again then. Brace yourselves, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Well, Absolutely. with that, Jay, it's this is one of my favorite parts of the week. Every week is linking up with you, wrapping up the world of combat sports. It's truly an honor to do this show with you, my man. And I mean that. Real talk. Oh, real talk. Oh, hell yeah, man. Look, this is the highlight of my week as well because – uh, it's it's always cool to cover the cards live, but it's always great to talk with everybody about the cards and actually get everybody's opinions and thoughts on it. Because in a live show, lots happening, you know, and we're doing commentary, but when we do this, it's beautiful because everybody can gather and talk about it. So I love this. I love this shit. Hey, I love this. We love you guys in the live chat. Uh, that's it. Okay. It is all over from Jay Isha and the Rush City Fight crew. We say good night. No strikeouts, no wipeouts, just knockouts, lights out. A good shot to get life to the sheep, least nice, but nah, he ain't nice underneath. Got a price on the lease, I don't trust when he speaks, be son of real spite for the meat. Why bleed with the best, got the people, the eagle and downs, I done feed with the flesh, trying to sneak with the rain, she believe that I'm blessed, got a speed to the left. All of my clothes, and the eagle to mess, oh no, might put on a roster, I bet she gonna dread to take over.